Sports Network welcomes you to the following presentation of the IZOD IndyCar Series. The largest city in Texas is always ready to go big, and today, H-Town is going big and fast. IndyCar Racing returns to Houston for the first time in six years, and it's a double-header weekend. Points leader Elio Castro Neves is ready to deliver his team owner, Roger Penske, the title that's eluded him for the last four consecutive years. He's got a healthy lead and can seal the deal this weekend. But two-time champion Scott Dixon is driving with more than speed. He's angered by a spate of misfortune and mistakes by his competitors and is not lying down. And then there's the self-described hunter. Frenchman Simon Paginot brings his savoir faire to Texas. In his mind, he's got nothing to lose and believes he can go from Rookie of the Year to Champion in just 12 months. Welcome to IndyCar Live, presented by Verizon. Hi folks, Lee Diffie along with Wally Dallin back here in the Lone Star State for the third and final doubleheader weekend in the Izod IndyCar Series for 2013. Things are getting really interesting championship-wise, and people are using words like pressure, tension, anxiety. But before we detail the championship scenario, Wally, first up, we have to talk about the issue at hand, and that is this racetrack. Yeah, they, they had some issues with the racetrack. There was a great big bump on the straightaway. Uh, the guys have done a really good job. They put in a temporary chicane uh, to try to, to work around that bump for now. See a lot of these guys um, talking about that. A couple of guys got in trouble. Newgarden got in trouble in, in the chicane. Elio just squeezed by. Um, and there was other issues, too. These guys just made a couple mistakes on the bumps. Uh, Captain Evans actually did this twice, exactly the same, and got away with it. But, um, you know, they came in, they, they ground out the bump, and um, these guys work very, very hard on trying to get this racetrack put together. They've done a great job to get cars on the racetrack and keep things on schedule. And uh, you see these guys taking a look at it after they ground it down. They're a little bit of a little bit of a bump there but you know what these guys are going to tough it up and, and go through it and i love the course i think this is a great street course it's nice and wide and uh I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and what happened that you saw that temporary chicane with the tyre bundle, uh, that was literally just temporary to get the cars out on track so that they could actually partake in practice and get some time on this track. Uh, the guys worked incredibly hard from 8 p.m. till 8 a.m. this morning to enable not only the Indy cars to get out on track, but also uh, the uh, the other classes in this, uh, in this race weekend. Well, it is a very big time for Elio Castro Neves. He has had 16 years in America. American open wheel racing. Today he starts his 275th open wheel event. He's getting ever so close to that elusive championship, but at the last race meeting in Baltimore, he had a big scare. Penske stop for championship leader Elio Castro Neves. He way misses marks, went too far forward. You're all right, you're all right. Hang on, hang on. Put it up, put it up. Come on, come on. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. I'm so sorry. We have learned Elio Castro Neves' last stop is officially under review for hitting equipment on pit road. Scott Dixon backs up a load of cars behind him. Things have certainly gone south. They're going to get the black flag here for hitting Doug Snyder, his right front tire changer. Elio will have to work his way through the field. This should be a lot of fun to watch. Here's our groovy graphic that we like to show you for the past few rounds about the championship situation. Big picture wise, look at the three, look at the nine. You'll see that big surge come uh, from Pocono and Toronto for the nine car. And then keep an eye down a couple of positions down the 77 of Simon Pagano. Here after that win in Baltimore, he catches right up and is very much a serious championship contender. So Castro Neves, Dixon and Pagano. Qualifying just completed not that long ago. And for the man from Houston, A.J. Foyt, the legend, his driver, Takuma Sato, gives that team its first pole since 1999, Billy Boat. Boy, it's been a long time coming, and they are celebrating, that's for sure. Have a look else. Will Power, Scott Dixon, the championship contender in there. Where is Elio Castro Neves? You have to keep going all the way back. He's not even in the top 20. Qualifying was a nightmare for the points leader. And he is back in 22nd position and will have some work to do. There he is. And the reason why he went from 22nd to 21st, there have been some non-approved engine changes and there have been three different drivers moved 
Sebastian Bourdais, Dario Franchitti and Graham Rahal, those drivers being moved back down the grid. All right, it's time to check in with our championship points leader, Marty Snyder is with Castro Neves. Well, Lee, you talked about that hole that he has to work out of today, starting 21st, his worst starting position of the year. But the good news is he's worked his way from the back to the front several times this year. What happened in qualifying? That's right. I mean, uh, unfortunately, it was one of those things that you, you don't understand. I mean, uh, I was talking to the engineer. The Shell boys did a great job. We're not sure if something was wrong with the car and the bottom of the car from yesterday uh, spin. But, um, well, we're trying to change everything, so make sure that um, we know what happened. But, um, hey, it's a, it's a Shell Penzoyo uh, GP of Houston, so uh, we have a Shell sponsorship. We can't finish in the back, you know, which <laughs> might, may start in the back, but we got to go to the front. Right now, it's just a position that... Uh, as you said, we, we've been, unfortunately, but um, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. Well, let's talk about that. You and I have talked for the last few weeks about how you've been a little conservative. You've been driving smarter, you say. Can you afford to do that today? Do you have to be aggressive starting that far back? Well, hopefully uh, we fix it. Well, we had the problem in the qualifying. Mm -hmm. Certainly, uh, that's not the scenario that you wanted. And um, we're going to learn as well from the track. The track has a lot of some is interesting scenarios. Uh, uh, people still learning, and we're still learning as well. So at this point... Yes, maybe if I'm able to afford to be a little bit aggressive, I will. And uh, but at the same time, we got to keep uh, keep moving forward. I'm not looking back. There's nobody in the back, so we got to keep moving forward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you want to be kept apprised of where Dixon and Pagano are today in terms of their points and what, what you might lose? It's not my job to do that. I think I have enough people um, in the booth, you know, at this point. Uh, Roger uh, and, and John Erickson and the entire team Penske will be looking for that. I just need to shut up and drive. <laughs> well, don't shut up too much. Hey, this track has thrown you for a little bit of a loop this weekend. Turn two has been has been tough. Is that the most difficult part of this track, do you feel? When it's really wide open like that, you know, uh, you really try and take a chance. And sometimes you, you kind of lose a little bit of reference. But uh, right now at this point, as you can see there, uh, we just uh, went a little bit too far on the braking. And uh, the rear just stepped out before even you turn. But um, hopefully uh, it's going to be a smooth race for us. And uh, as I said, I just want to keep looking forward and um, have no issues. We the interesting thing he told me, he said, I expect to see a lot of wrecks today, so I'd either rather start in the front or the back. He got his wish. He's starting in the back this afternoon. He did start 17th at Milwaukee and managed to finish second, so he's used to coming through the field. If we're going to talk about Elio Castro Nevis, we must talk about Scott Dixon. There's three races to go in this championship. He won his first IZOD IndyCar Series title in 03, being 42 points back with three to go. He's 49 points behind Castro Nevis with three to go. He created headlines this year when he won three in a row and he got that Sonax bonus one hundred thousand dollars in Toronto but the last couple of rounds he's been plagued by trouble this is the GoPro Grand Prix of Sonoma Dixon is your leader he needs to do this to keep his championship hopes alive and here come the guys who are running in the top two that was nasty so it could make for an interesting race to the end. Scott Dixon will be penalized. Considering that was Helio's teammate, that's a bunch of more. Will Power is a three-time winner of Sonoma Raceway. Scott Dixon, he's going to have to settle for 15th place. That's probably the most blatant thing I've seen in a long time. If you watch most pick guys, they try to get out of the way of other people. So that was a bit of a move right there, to be honest. We're packing up for a restart. Let's go. Dixon on the inside. Oh, Whoa! wow. Will Power chops across in front of Scott Dixon, and the championship contender's day is over. Holy cow. Well, if tensions weren't high enough last weekend, they've just been elevated to a whole new level. I don't know what happened. It could have been because Dixon might have been there and yeah, took him out with him. He was alongside us. Oh. How much can Scott Dixon take? I don't know what he was thinking. Um, you know, I was clearly alongside, and then he just turned straight into me. I just feel bad, man. I don't know. I just didn't even think to look in my mirror. I, I thought I got such a good run on this guy. You know, I just feel bad for him. You know, I know he was in the championship hunt. Well, this certainly was not Scott Dixon's uh, favorite highlight package to watch of his career. It's been a rough month, and now you've had nothing to do for the last month since the last race. After Sonoma, you weren't very happy with the Verizon team. After Baltimore, not very happy with the Verizon driver. Where do things stand with you and Will Power now? Uh, no, it's been fine. You know, I spoke to, to Will after the after you know probably a few days after the race in in, uh, in Baltimore. It's you know it's unfortunate what happened. You know, I don't think uh, he did it on purpose. Um, you know, I think it. 
that day I was more angry about what happened with uh, my car, the 9, and, and then when I got taken out by the 15 and then not getting the car back from race control. So um, Will was probably the least of my issues at that point. But, uh, you know, we, we, we all race hard. Um, you know, typically he's a guy that you can trust uh, right down to the wire. And, and one of, that was just one of those days where I think, uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't look in his mirror and he didn't see that uh, somebody was there. So um, it's been a tough couple of weeks, uh, you know, or well, tough last couple of races um you know but we've uh, we've still got uh, some points to make in you know, 162 points i think with all the bonus points uh, on the table and and uh well, 161 maybe now because we didn't get the polls so uh, we've got a little bit of work to do but uh excited for for today's race let's talk happier thoughts now the last time indycar had a double header also a street course race it went awfully well for you you swept the double header at toronto picked up a hundred thousand dollar bonus does anything from that street course or any street course transfer to here I think uh, basic setups have definitely helped, and I think uh, you know this weekend you know we, we rolled off pretty pretty decent. Uh, you know, the tracks changed a few times over the weekend, but uh, you know to, to qualify third today, um, you know it was second quickest in our session, uh, which is same as Toronto. I think day one we were we were uh, third off the grid, so you know maybe we can improve on that a little bit tomorrow. But you know we'll be pushing to, to get uh, you know a double victory here again to see if we can try and close uh, the points gap at the minute. The first thing you need to have happen is Castro Neves to start back, which he will do but how is your approach going into this race you got a lot of ground to catch up how aggressive are you uh, you know, we, we've we've just you know we've still got to be smart. You know, there's no point going out there and, and you know every, each weekend we come into uh, as a team with Team Tiger we come to win. Um, you know, so making silly moves or anything like that is going to take those chances away. Um, but you know, we still need to be aggressive. We still need to make sure that we get good points. Um, you know, and, and not really think about where the three is. You know, they seem to be taking care of themselves at the minute. It's just you know whether we can actually get points. You know, I think after the last two races, had they gone smoothly. We'd probably be leading the championship right now, uh, but that's not uh, it's not the fact. And, and you know we've got to try and dig deep and, and and power through that. Thank you, Scott. Have a good run. Thanks, man. Scott Dixon will start third today, Lee. Kevin, he's a two-time champion, an Indy 500 winner, but I don't think I've seen the 33-year-old Kiwi drive with as much passion as he has this year. Let's talk about two titans of the sport, Roger Penske, Chip Ganassi. It's the two super teams, and there are their career stats. But I want to draw your attention to the bottom. Look at that, 2014 editions, one Pablo Montoya, the new signing to go to the captain's team, and then just announced yesterday, confirmed yesterday, that this year's Indy 500 winner, Tony Kanaan, will take a fourth seat at Target Chip Ganassi Racing. You heard Scott Dixon mention the points at stake. He said 162. Well, he corrected himself. 161 after the point for pole was given away. So they're very much aware of how many points they can get and the bonus points as well. And that's what it's all to play for with just three races left in the 2013 season. Let's show you qualifying highlights from earlier today. Two groups, there was no Firestone Fast 6 and this was a nasty moment for rookie Tristan Vautier at turn 10. The high speed turn 10, the final corner on the track and that put a massive dent in that session. So the competitors were stopped for quite some time. There was a little bit of confusion there with Elio Castro Nevis and the whole Matro safety car. Not quite sure what that was about but you can see the frustration on Castro Nevis's face. In the second group it was a thrilling dice between a couple of competitors but in the end Takuma Sato gives AJ Foyt Racing its first pole as I mentioned earlier since 1999 and Taku gets his Verizon P1 award. That's his first pole in a couple of years. Let's hear from Sato. He's standing by with Jan. And Lee, of course, it's his third career poll for Takuma Sato. And you and I spoke just before qualifying, and I think I can say you were less than confident. But, but what happened? It came together in qualifying. Well, I mean, it was a little bit unknown before the qualifying because we had a literally 10 minutes uh, warm-up where we just cleared out the uh, chicane through the turn one and the first time to go to the, uh, you know, the turn two in, 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 in full speed. And the car was bouncing all over the place. So it was, it was a tough one, but I think uh, we... We gained um, uh, some speed all the time, and um, you know I think obviously team done a tremendous job. So that was uh, we are happy now. Well, it was one lap, and it was very fun to watch. And one thing very interesting: a lot of sports we talk about home field advantage because of the hometown crowd. Not so much in auto racing, but this is the first time that this team has participated home home state home area for the team. Does that give you a little added incentive? 
Oh, I think so. I mean, uh, we've just been unlucky. You know, mid-season, it was difficult, a lot of unfortunate situation. But we're back now with the speed and with confidence, particularly today, like... You know, we won the P1 award in front of AJ, and that was so nice things. And I mean, he missed Long Beach, so he deserved it. And uh, we're really proud that we've done it in front of him. I mean, it's, it's going to be a long race this afternoon, but uh, we'll hopefully we have a strong package. You talk about a long race. The forecast is for 104 degrees as a heat index. What's that going to do to you in the car? Well, nothing really we can do other than you can drink, make sure that you're not dehydrated. I'm sure we will lose a two liters of liquid, um, so, but we got only one liter in, in, in the back. So but just make sure you drink all the time and stay cool. Otherwise, um, it's going to be tough one. It will. Don't forget that Takuma Sato started his professional career as a cyclist. He'll know how to hydrate. Terrific, terrific effort from Takuma Sato to put the AJ Foyt machine on pole position. And, and uh, Taku is part of an interesting club this year. That is first-time winners. We've got four in total. As you can see, James Hinchcliffe, Taku, Simon Pagano and Charlie Kimball. And a couple of those guys have been fortunate to win multiple times. It's been a very interesting year in the IZOD IndyCar Series. We're pleased to say that we've got a little bit of an extra pre-race show for you today. The whole week has been a bit of a scramble to get this facility ready in time for the race weekend with that little hiccup with the bump on the front straight the whole schedule's been moved back and so we're going to have a little extra time before we see the green fall so we've got a lot more interviews to do for you and to bring you up to speed with all the latest news in the izod indycar series you're watching indycar live on nbcsn brought to you by verizon Every race weekend we have a medal honor recipient that comes with us to the race to talk to the employers about the importance of hiring National Guard soldiers. The favorite part tonight is definitely is walking across the canal over to the memorial and, and sharing time with them. I'm really proud to be a part uh, of Panther Racing's effort as far as the Hire Our Heroes program and to pay tribute to those uh, men and women that are serving us in the National Guard because you know if they don't have a job they can't be in the Guard. And we can't thank our hometown heroes enough for what they do. There have been some fantastic races in this year's IZOD IndyCar Series. How about that last corner, last lap pass in Brazil? Charlie Kimball winning his career first race at uh, Mid-Ohio. And then all of that controversy at Sonoma. But one thing that's got everybody talking for the past month were those closing laps at Baltimore. Nine laps to go on the streets of Baltimore. Pagano looks really, really strong right there. Inside, this is for the lead. Oh, Better lock it up. And Treddy fights Pagano. That was an unbelievable move on Pagano. And Corday goes for it. Wow, this is... Oh! Simon Pagano has blown out his lead over Joseph Newgarden. Simon Pagano sees the checkered flag and wins the Baltimore Grand Prix. And of course that footage brings a smile to Simon Pagano's face reliving what happened in Baltimore. That was an awesome event. And when I talked to you when you were standing in the car, you were very quick to talk about championship. You said, we're alive in the championship. You've now come out and said, we're only 70 points back. We're a player. Why do you think so? Well, I think, you know, we've, got a, we've had a, a fast car on the street circuit. Uh, Double header seems to smile to us with the, the win in, in Detroit. And, and I think we're on a roll. I think the car is fast. I think the, the team is working really well as a two-car team right now. I feel like I'm driving better than I've ever driven. Uh, and I'm, I've got a lot of motivation. I want to have an opportunity, so I want to try to go and grab it. Starting about and talking about grabbing it, that, that makes me think about the start. <laughs> You've qualified fourth. You said there's more in the car. How aggressive do you start this race? Well, you know, it's a standing start, so anything can happen. You can jump three position. Uh, depending on what the others do, there's still a lot to learn about those standing starts for us and how much traction you get out of it. I mean, we've got pretty powerful engines now and a lot of wheel spin in first gear, so it's how much you can put traction down. Uh, but certainly, you know, I told you before the weekend, I'm going to be aggressive today. He will be aggressive. Don't forget, he has cut his teeth in Europe where standing start is the norm. So maybe a little advantage on the standing start. He'll be right there. 
Thanks, Jan. He's last year's Sunoco Rookie of the Year. I think one of the most impressive things about Simon Paginot, he started this year by finishing 24th at St. Pete. That's where he left the first round. He does not give up, and he is a championship contender. We've got some major news to bring you to since we were last with you at Baltimore. Really exciting stuff. We touched on it before. Juan Pablo Montoya, open wheels and NASCAR star, coming back to where it all began in IndyCar. He is joining Team Penske. Tony Kanaan, this year's Indy 500 winner, going to Ganassi. Huge news. And then a one big bombshell that was dropped yesterday, Ganassi leaving Honda Power and going to Chevrolet next year. Nobody saw that one coming. And then, really big news, which we'll elaborate on throughout the broadcast, the inaugural Grand Prix of Indianapolis will kick things off in the month of May. And a man who did very well at the first doubleheader earlier this year in Detroit, Mike Conway, the Brit, is back here to drive for Dale Coin Racing. But as we mentioned... Tony Kanaan creating some headlines. And look at this, the illustrious career. He's got that 500 win now. He was the champion back in 04. And just look at that glittering list of teams the Brazilian has driven for. Steve Horn at Tasman, Jerry Forsyth, Mo Nunn, Michael Andretti and the Green Brothers, and then his good friend Jimmy Vassar and Kevin Kalkoven. And now he adds Chip Ganassi to that list. Let's hear from the Indy 500 winner. And it's certainly been an interesting week and an interesting few weeks making this decision. It's a, an opportunity every race car driver wants to be with a team like Chip Ganassi's team, but you also had to leave your friend Jimmy Vassar and the team that helped you achieve your dream of the Indy 500. How tough was it? It was a tough decision, Kevin. I think uh, on the personal side, I didn't want to leave my friend. On the professional side, it was a, it was a great opportunity for me. And, and at the end of the day, you got to think about yourself and, uh, you know, uh, Chip's organization has uh, won a lot of races. I've been beaten by these guys uh, for a long time, and, and, and it was an opportunity for us to uh, to do something good. So, uh, you know, Jimmy uh, is a good friend, and he will continue to be one of my best friends, and we'll keep the memories together, and I wish the KV guys uh, the best of luck next year with uh, whoever they're going to end up uh, having uh, to drive uh, the car that I drove for the past three years. I hear people say you can't go back, but you are going back with your friend and former teammate, Dario Franchitti. You guys somewhat made racing magic back in the day. Can you do it again? I hope so. I think uh, we're older and wiser now, and uh, we have two other teammates with Charlie and uh, and Dixie that uh, it's going to make a strong team. I mean, I can't thank Chip enough. And also, I have to rephrase the, the, the sponsorship side. You know, NTT Data, that came into this series, a brand new sponsor, which people keep saying that... Uh, we're not capable of doing those kind of things. Big props to them uh, for coming to the series as well. And, uh, you know, let's go racing. I'm excited. But, uh, you know, I still have three races to go with KV. I'm going to do my best to bring uh, my friend Jimmy another win, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. That's Tony Kanaan still finishing up with KV Racing Technology. But next year, the fourth driver for Chip Ganassi's team. Exciting times ahead for the man we call TK. Quick reminder about the IndyCar 13 app. To download it, simply call Star Star Indy or search the App Store or Google Play only from Verizon. Well, the Grand Marshal this weekend is none other than Supertex, Houston's own AJ Foyt, and we speak with the legend when we come back. Being in the Lone Star State, we thought it appropriate to show you some of the best that Texas has done for IndyCar. Walt Faulkner, he was on the pole at the Indy 500 back in 50. Judd Larson, he had five IndyCar wins in his career. Lloyd Ruby, hard luck Lloyd, made 18 Indy 500 starts with a best finish of third. And how about Bill Homeyer? Qualified for two 500s, finished just outside the top 10 was his best. And then, of course, Super Tex. He was a rookie at the 558 and already looked like a champion. There's not a whole lot more you can say about one of the sport's greatest drivers, AJ Foyt. He's pretty happy today, by the way, for his driver, Takuma Sato, putting it on the pole position. A man who has won the Indy 500, Daytona 500, Le Mans, and the Rolex 24 at Daytona has such a story to tell. And his good friend, Robin Miller, sat down with him in part one of a two-part series. Where we're at right now used to be Playland Park, did it not? Right in this area was a quarter mile dirt track and had a lot of fun starting my race and had a lot of fights here. <laughs> After a heat race or something, people run to the grandstand and the pits you pull in and see who's gonna win the fight. Talk about Doc Cossie and how he got you started because there weren't driver schools back when you started and there weren't rich daddies buying guys rides like it happens now. Well, actually, uh, 
You know, when you're a little kid and you got a hero and he had an outboard, I'll never forget, red and white, number eight, it was a midget. And, uh, you know, run a quarter mile that were over across from Buff Stadium, they call it. And uh, Daddy knew he was kind of my favorite race driver and built me a little car and painted red and white and had number eight and they took it out to, I, I got a call on Buff Stadium and I drove beside him and made a lap or two. So it, it was a, a highlight of my life. When you first started running a full midget, well, you were 16, 17, 18 years old? Yeah, I think I was 17, and the first time I drove one, you know, Johnny Parsons, Vukovic, and all come down here, I set a new track record. Of course, I run dead last all night long, <laughs> got in the wall and everything else. So that's when you knew right then with all those IndyCar heroes here, I can do this. Well, I didn't know if I could do it. I knew I wanted to do it, and I knew it was going to be a, a job, and... I felt like that was better than working at my father's mechanic shop and coming in the winter where water was dripping in your face and all that, laying under the cars working. So that's probably what made me a, a halfway decent race driver. The boys race today, they don't understand how much fun it was coming up through the ranks where most of them come up, like you say, they got a, a rich daddy or somebody rich to back them where I come up with nothing. And if I'd had to come up with something like that, I wouldn't probably have done what I did because uh, a lot of people after 1961 winning in a um, motor speedway, they said, boy, I bet you had big steaks. I said, I sure did. So where'd you eat? I said, it's White Castle. I think they were 10 or 11 cents. <laughs> they said, you're kidding me. I said, no, that's what I had, man, my wife. That was your victory dinner. That was you took Lucy's dinner. at White Castle. Right. <laughs> that's great. And yes, I can hear you screaming from home. Why didn't? Why wasn't Lone Star JR Johnny Rutherford on that list? Well, it was Texas-born IndyCar stars, and of course, Lone Star JR was actually born in Kansas. Marty Snyder standing by with another Texas-born IndyCar star. Marty? That's right, Dallas's own Ryan Hunter Ray, and uh, you moved to Florida at a very young age, though. Hey, we're talking championship a moment ago. You're 76 out. What's the mindset coming in? Still doable? It's still doable. I mean, we need to win. We need to win from here out, but, um, you know, we saw what happened last year. Just keep fighting and, uh, you know, keep our hearts in it, that's for sure. Had a little bit of a hard uh, time this morning at qualifying, just the timing of the whole thing. We were on the other end of that, but, um, hey, we still got a race here right now, and uh, it's been a tough year, but, you know, there's been a lot of highlights. Three three poles, two wins. We can uh, close the, the year out the way we want to here. Are you almost amazed you're even in the championship hunt with all the goofy mechanical things you guys have had this year? I am, and, and when you look at it that way, it's unfortunate because, you know, you realize how much there could be. I mean, we've, we've been hit from behind a few times, and... Uh, uh, I think three or four electrical failures now, and then, you know, I've taken myself out of a race or two here and there, too. So it's just it's one of those seasons. It's it's tough racing in IndyCar, though. It's, uh, you know, it, it's wheel to wheel the entire way through, and that's, I think, what we're going to see here today. Born in Dallas, grew up in Miami, but how do you not let 104 heat indices get to you in the car mentally? Well, this is the good thing about living in, in South Florida. It feels like we're racing in, 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 in Miami or Fort Lauderdale right now, but... Uh, it's good to be here in Houston, but this is this is a bit this is a bit hot. Uh, I, I'm absolutely not gonna not gonna try and shy away from that. Really upset at Lee because you know he gets to go to the ice cold booth after this. It's not fair, is it? Oh man, you come out of the AC. It's almost <laughs> better not to be in the AC because when you it. come out, it just hits you in the face here. There you go. All right, Diff, enjoy that AC in a little bit. Uh, yeah, no AC up here at the moment. Buddy. <laughs> right now, no. But later, yes. <laughs> Hey, we've got a spectacular Saturday coming your way here on NBCSN and NBC. Check out that for a menu of things. Notre Dame, the countdown happens. And then, of course, Arizona State versus Notre Dame, and that's over on NBC. MLS, Major League Soccer, Colorado up against Seattle. And then don't forget the Formula One Grand Prix of in the early hours of tomorrow morning. When we come back, Mark Miles to talk about the inaugural Grand Prix of Indianapolis. H-Town is looking good today. Houston welcomes back the IZOD IndyCar Series. Open wheel racing hasn't been here in some six years. And here we are at the Reliant Park track. Really looking forward to it. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie along with Wally Dallenbach. And we welcome in CEO of Holman & Co., Mr. Mark Miles, to talk about that exciting news about the inaugural Grand Prix of Indianapolis. Mark, it was kind of a, a risky move in some way, wasn't it? Because uh, a lot of the fans were out there saying, hang on a second, the, the IndyCar series is messing with tradition in the month of May. It should only be about what goes on on the speedway. But you've gone ahead and you've implemented a road course race. Happy with the decision? Yeah, I couldn't be more happy with it. it maybe it was risky. I have a feeling a year from now people will be saying, why didn't they do this before? For us to have the chance to show what uh, is a big part of, of the IndyCar series in Indianapolis and take nothing away from all the fans who love to see us on the Oval building to the 500 made a lot of sense. Um, 
We're trying to do it so everybody understands it's not the 500. We're not going to use the same stands. It's priced in a very friendly way, putting a lot of money into improving the track, so it'll be great racing, and uh, I think it's just going to be great for IndyCar fans. And, and speaking of, you guys did make some changes to the track. Can you kind of explain, because I think you're making it a little bit better as far as you know, uh, competition-wise and passing and things like that. So what all did you guys change from what you had there with like the sports cars? Well, first of all, for, for uh, 500 fans, uh, we're going to go the other way, and, and the folks in Indianapolis may, may uh, uh, first of all, be struck by that. That first turn coming off the oval, the main straightaway from the oval, is, is t TK called it one of the most exciting uh, passing zones in road course racing, street racing. You, there's a place uh, up about around turn five there that is uh, going to have what people are calling the signature chicane. We think that little short straightaway there will lead to some really good passing on that next turn, a hard left going around and there's still a talk about whether we might want to stay on the oval over there on the the, the road the uh, oval turn one or come back in as you see it cut off there we've had a lot of good input from drivers and we're sure it's going to be an exciting track it's actually the third iteration of road course at the indianapolis motor speedway because formula one and grand am raced on the same track moto gp has their own unique design and that one there is especially for indycar this is going to happen in early may early in the month of may what can you tell us about the rest of the 2014 indycar schedule well, we're going to put it out, I think, on the uh, Thursday before our race in Fontana. So it's, it's essentially done. We're working on the, tele the television and the broadcast schedule, seeing if we can get that all nailed down and announce them at the same time. It's going to feel very much the same uh, in terms of the same number of races. One significant difference is we're going to try to end the year on the Labor Day weekend. We're doing that because um, we just feel like it's the best way to have a culmination and an uptick at the end of the year so everybody can anticipate the end of the championship and make more fans. All right, Mark, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate your time. We will continue IndyCar Live, presented by Verizon, here from the streets of Houston. When we come back, we are getting very close to the start of round 17 of this 19-round schedule, and our championship leader is starting at the back. NBCSN is your home of open wheel racing coming up in the early hours of tomorrow morning or later tonight if you're on the west coast. It's the Korean Formula One Grand Prix and don't forget about Circuit of the Americas, the US Grand Prix coming up later in November. It's a hot and humid day here in Houston. We're getting ready to go racing but first let's check in. Let's get down on the grid for the pre-race ceremony. Race fans, we ask that you rise and remove your hats and join one of the most watched inspirational figures in America, the pastor of Lakewood Church, Joel Olstein, as he offers this afternoon's invocation. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for this day and the opportunity to be out here with friends and family members. And we just pray, Father, that everybody have a great time and that most of all, that you'd watch over the drivers, that you'd keep them from accident and harm. And just pray, Father, that their skill, their expertise, their training will come out to the full and that it'll be a great success and that we'll all have a great time today. In Jesus' name, amen. As we mentioned a little earlier, it is very hot, it is very humid. This is the final doubleheader race weekend for the IZOD IndyCar Series in 2013. And these guys and girls have to do 90 laps, 9-0 laps around this 1.7 mile circuit. It is tough, it's bumpy, it's concrete lined. We know what the perils of street course racing are. And this one is going to be tough. And if you've just turned on, championship challengers Scott Dixon and Simon Pagano have qualified well. Points leader Elio Castro Neves is buried in the pack in 21st position. It's going to be a tough day for Elio. And now, race fans, please join retired Houston Police Department Sergeant and Houston favorite Cynthia Miller for our singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched 
were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave how about a race fans Cynthia Miller and a big a lot of excitement about this race returning to the Lone Star State and the city of Houston. H-Town is going to turn it on today and tomorrow in this final double header. It is quite a sight to watch a street course venue be constructed and it's almost unimaginable the amount of man hours that go into it. The logistics behind it quite incredible and then when you add on to that that the Houston Texans unfortunately if you're a Texans fan lost here at Reliance Stadium last weekend to the Seattle Seahawks in overtime and then as soon as that game was finished and everybody cleared out in came the track construction crew and worked incredibly hard and it's time now for us to talk and look more about this 1. mile, uh, 1.7 mile circuit as GoPro gives us a look at the track with this week's GoPro course preview. I picked up some Texans on the way, and I'm flattered that you girls would ride with me, even after you did the background check on me. So we're going to take a lap around this new Houston racetrack. Oh, it's a little bit bumpy there. That's no, no big deal. Oh, there's Yellow flag ball. means caution. This okay. is the chicane. Oh, okay. <laughs> How about a cheer for NBC, at least? There's a go, NBC! <laughs> All right, left hand. This is a good place to pass. It's awfully tight here, but it's a good passing zone right here. We got a little congestion here. We got some guys working off track, so we're going to have to go slow here, ladies. Now, this is a high-speed part of the racetrack. We're going to see some high speeds in any car, too. They're going to be flying very tight through here, but it's awfully fast. The car's going to kind of push out to the wall, and we're setting up for, uh, I believe, a left hand are coming up. I really don't know this track that well. Roller coaster rides have nothing on this. Just want to let y'all know. Easy, ladies. Okay, the left-hander, this is another really good place to pass. A little short shoot here, going to lead us on to kind of a fast sweeper through here. I, I, how about Townsend Bell? I don't miss him. How about you, girl? Oh, who, who's that? Who's that? Exactly. Do you know which? That's exactly right. <laughs> no, that's it. Okay, a little short shoot here. Busy, busy racetrack, but it's, I think it's going to be a real challenge. This is going to be a tough corner for these guys here. Leading on to another short shoot, it's going to be into another left-hander. So very, this is a really, this is the last corner of the racetrack, but this is going to be interesting for these guys. It really tightens up here, and that's a lap. Hey! How about a shout out to Robin? Robin Miller, 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 Miller. <laughs> I met my wife, Robin. <laughs> Oh, boy. I don't even know what to say. Only you. Only you. This is serious business, Lee. I don't know what's so funny. It's really a lot of work driving that pace car. <laughs> Townsend will be regretting missing this one. But Townsend Bell will be back tomorrow. He's racing his Ferrari in the American Le Mans Series at the moment. Hey, we want to thank the Houston Texans for letting us play in their backyard. And speaking of the Texans, they will feature on Football Night in America tomorrow night. San Francisco hosts the Texans. Bob Costas hosts Football Night in America. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Pacific, only on NBC and both of those teams at two and two on the season. You've been watching IndyCar Live here on NBCSN presented by Verizon. For Scott Dixon, the last three IndyCar events have been a far cry from his three wins in a row earlier this year.
at Mid-Ohio choosing to make the race in just two stops left him falling back in the field, while the emotions of the Sonoma pit incident became just the beginning for what would explode at Baltimore. Dixon on the inside. Oh, wow. And the championship contender's day is over. I must say about 12. I don't know what he was thinking. You know, it's clearly alongside and he just did straight into me. For Elio Castro Neves, his last three races have seen good fortunes fall his way in the wake of trouble. Dixon backs up a load of cars. Castro Neves sets dead still in the middle of the corner. His last pit stop is under review. With misfortune hitting Scott, Elio has seen his lead grow to 49 points with just three races left. As H-Town doubles down, can Dixon find that winning feeling or will someone else rise to challenge Elio? largest city in the state of Texas is turning it on for the IZOD IndyCar Series as we welcome you to race one of this two race weekend, the last doubleheader. It is the Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston from Reliant Park here in the shadows of Reliant Stadium and the Reliant Astrodome, two colossal constructions and it is quite the place to be. We have to say it is extremely hot and extremely humid. This is going to be a tough day's work for the competitors in the IZOD IndyCar Series. It's not really hard work if you're Morris Feigl, though, from Edmond, Oklahoma. Morris is sitting behind Ari Leyendijk. How's the ride there, Morris? Absolutely great. <laughs> Tell us about the temperature, because this is what you're, you're feeling, what the competitors are about to feel in that fire suit and your helmet. I could... I couldn't imagine going the whole time. Yeah, 90 laps is what they have to do, Morris. We're going to leave you alone. Congratulations, and you can be like Morris. You can get in on Honda's fastest seat in sports sweepstakes by logging on to shophonda.com, and you can take a ride in the IZOD two-seater with either Ari Leyendijk or Mario Andretti, just like Morris Feigl from Edmond, Oklahoma, is right now. Cars rolling, cars on track. Let's show you who is starting where. And for the third time in his career, Takuma Sato starts on the pole. As I said before, there was no Firestone Fast 6. There were two separate groups. Sato was quickest in Group 2. Will Powell was the quickest from Group 1. Let's roll through to the second row. Yeah, Scott Dixon, the man who's got a lot of points to make up, but he's in a good position to do it. And another guy that still thinks he's got a really good shot at this championship, sitting in outside row 2. Yeah, that's the second race meeting in a row that Pagano started on the second row. How about Simona Di Silvestro? That is her best start since the season opening race on the streets of St. Petersburg. And James Hinchcliffe, who was one of the drivers in the middle of all the silly season rumours and talk, he starts right alongside. Luca Filippi is back. The Italian rookie has done an outstanding job. So too James Jakes, one of his best qualifiers of the year. He starts on row five alongside Marco Andretti. Conway back in the car for uh, Dale Coyne Racing and Justin Wilson, who showed a lot of speed here in, in practice. Uh, he could be a factor before the thing's over. As we roll back through the grid, if you weren't with us earlier on for IndyCar Live presented by Verizon, you have to keep going back, back, back through this field until you find Elio Castro Neves. He's all the way back in 20 first position. How is he going to pull this one off, Wally? Okay, this is where you really have to be, prevent the wheels from falling off right here. He's, in a, he's leading the championship. He did not get a qualifying run in once. He's back in a lot of traffic. Um, he's going to have to be very, very careful. Well, on the other hand, Dixon, he's just going to be on attack mode. Elio is with the majority. And that is, the majority of this field have not competed here on the streets of Reliant Park before. There are only six who have? It's time to take a closer look at this track. Wally talks yeah, through the finer points. 1.7 miles. Uh, you know, I really like the way this track is set up. There's a lot of good passing zones because this track is so wide. Turn 2 is a good one. Turn 6 and turn 9. Um, I, I'm, I think we're going to see a lot of guys dive bombing uh, for positions in these corners. It's not that long, but it is bumpy and it is challenging. Time to check in with the guys on the ground. Let's start with Marty. Well, Lee, I just checked in with A.J. Foyt. He told me he was, quote, tickled that his car is on the pole this afternoon. And, in fact, Larry Foyt, being their hometown race, told their guys, you need to realize this is almost as important to us as the Indy 500. This 
is an absolutely huge race for us. And of course, uh, besides all of that, we have a standing start this afternoon. Will Power on the front row with Sato told me Sato was one of the best in the world at standing starts. Jan? And when you look at Scott Dixon coming into the frame now, Scott Dixon, they call him the Iceman. And that has been very evident this weekend. Anytime he's been in pit lane or in that race car, one Roller. level higher of focus. He is very focused, knows a lot of points are on the line. Well, we're talking about standing starts. Takuma Sato does not only race in this series, he also races in Super Formula, which is the former Formula Nippon. They have standing starts, and at the last race he competed in, he stalled it on the line. The pole sitter will not want that to happen again. This is race 17 of the 19 race schedule, and for the second time this year, we see standing starts. Kimball is in trouble. We're about to go into aborted start mode. And we saw this at Toronto in race one there. Field, roll out forward, please. Meet the pace car in turn two. They will come back around and make a second attempt at this. You remember at Toronto, they just waved it off and said, we're just going to go with a rolling start, and it got pushed back to, uh, to Sunday. However, we will have a second shot at this. Robin Miller joins Wally and myself in the booth. Robin, what are your thoughts on these standing starts for the series? You like them? I like them, believe, because when, when Tony Cotman tried them in Champ Car a few years ago, they did them at Cleveland, Toronto, Portland, all these places that were tough because of the first turn. It spaced the cars. They were going 30 miles an hour slower into the first corner. And they didn't have any big pileups. You're looking at the Mid-Ohio race winner, Charlie Kimball, from the Ganassi team in the Novo Nordisk car. And he gets fired and sent. So he will rejoin the pack and have a second shot at the standing start. Let's check in with Kevin Lee. Kevin? Marco Andretti, keep an eye on him. He is still in the championship hunt. Even though he's 71 points back, fourth, he's still someone, especially when you deal with these concrete walls and a doubleheader street course race, don't count him out. This has been his best season in IndyCar, but for Marco, he still wants a lot more. He doesn't have a win yet this season, so that's first and foremost on his mind before he really starts digging deep into his championship possibilities. He was leading late in the race in Baltimore, and he just tagged his teammate EJ Vizo to knock off some of the front wing, which had major handling implications on his car. I said to him yesterday, tell us about those closing laps at Baltimore. He said, it was some of the scariest of my life. It was good racing to watch, I'll tell you. It certainly was. We're going, we had an aborted start. We're going to try again. The reason why Charlie Kimball experienced trouble on the grid. Jan, tell us more. Tell us why. The team just said that they could not disengage the clutch. So obviously when you come to a stop, you've got to be able to disengage the clutch to select neutral and then get ready to go. So he will now, by the regulations, be moved to the back of the field because he caused that aborted start. But still no word on whether it will disengage the second time was due to start in 16th position but as Jan highlighted there we'll get shoved back to the back of the pack Charlie raced in Europe he's done a lot of standing starts in his career so it's a Takuma Sato willpower front row on the second row two guys who are really in this championship chase Scott Dixon and Simon Pagenaud look to the back of the grid all cars are in position is the call looking good the Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston. And they're holding him for a long time. Now we see Green and look at a stall. That's Hinchcliffe. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. And contact Ed Carpenter tags Hinchcliffe. And that, you know what? That's really, really tough when you start back there in the back and you're going. And when the, when the field opens up, it's almost too late to avoid a, a car like that. It's a tough situation. And these competitors at the front have already got the call, and they will see that we're going to slow down again due to that. And Tristan Vautier did a very good job to avoid Hinchcliffe. So many other drivers did as well, and unfortunately, Ed Carpenter was the unlucky one right at the end to tag the stranded James Hinchcliffe. And we've got three replays for you coming up. Let's take a look. It looks like he, he just started to take off and stall the car. A couple guys just squeezed through. Yeah, from a different angle here. He would have to make aggressive moves to get around. Winch left and he banked the wall with the right rear tire. You can see it right here. He moves up. And was that, who was it? That was really close. Vautier, Vautier was the closest. Yeah. And then obviously Carpenter came through. Let's show you from up above. 
The only thing I don't understand here, Robin, is he sure somebody had enough time to tell him on the radio that there was a dead car in the racetrack. Well, and, and you're not, you know, look how slow you're going. If these cars don't accelerate like Formula One cars do, well, that's a good point. And unfortunately, James Hinchcliffe was in a very similar situation last year on the streets of Service Paradise in the V8 supercar race where he stalled when driving for Gary Rogers Motorsport. And his teammate then, uh, Ricky Taylor, came through from the back of the pack and there was a huge collision, one of the biggest ever seen in V8 supercars on the Gold Coast. So, tough break for James Hinchcliffe here in race one of this doubleheader weekend in Houston. We'll be back. Forty-five years in IndyCar racing. I've been a mechanic, a car builder, an engineer, a team manager, and now a team owner. I'm truly living the dream. It all started at Lincoln Tech. Lincoln Tech is the national leader in training for careers that build America. He ignored the naysayers and never compromised. When Thomas Edison threw the switch, it changed everything. Engineering without compromise. This is the Mazda way. And this is the Mazda CX-5. Skyactiv technology makes it lighter yet stronger, earning a top safety pick and more fuel efficient than any hybrid SUV. This is the uncompromised Mazda CX-5. What do you drive? Give me your street circuits. Your ovals. Give me your road courses and your cathedrals of speed. Give me drivers who live to put it all on the line and cars unlike any other. Because this is America. And here, we race IndyCar. In two weeks on the NBC Sports Network. NBC SN's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by Shell, a proud sponsor of the Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston. As we welcome you back to the Reliant Park circuit, we need to just re uh, remind you that at 10 Eastern, the push for the MLS Cup playoffs is on NBC SN, a Western Conference showdown between Colorado and Seattle. All rise for Major League Soccer tonight at 10 Eastern. For those of you just turning on, welcome to our live coverage here from Houston. And uh, we had an aborted start, standing starts for the second time this year. We had an aborted start after Charlie Kimball got in trouble with his clutch. We then went for a second attempt and unfortunately, James Hinchcliffe stalled. This is our championship leader, Elio Castro Neves. And why are we showing you him? We're gonna take you back just a few moments ago and give you his point of view on that second standing start and the crash involving Ed Carpenter and James Hinchcliffe. This is what it looked like for Elio. Look to the right-hand side, you'll see the stalled car. Close call for Frank Heaty as well. And there they go over that much talked about bump, which was ground down overnight. Some 12 hours they worked to try and reduce that hump in the road. And while James Hinchcliffe makes his way back to the pits, our Marty Snyder is right there. I'm trying, Jeff. I, I, you know, I think we're Marty after someone that. here. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know who we're after. I've asked him to talk, and uh, we'll see what's going on. Back with more in a moment. Okay. Yeah, as you can imagine, he does not look pleased. The body language says it all. The three-time winner this year, he's enjoyed some amazing moments in the 2013 season, but he's also uh, had to endure some pretty low moments. Well, think about this, Lee. I mean, if he, if he's not with Andretti next year, he's going to have two more starts with him. They want to try and keep him. Jimmy Vassar wants him to come drive for him and take Tony Kanaan's place. So at least he maybe has two options, but obviously not how he wants to finish this weekend. Yeah. 
What an awful couple of weeks it's been for the uh, Fuzzies vodka team for Ed Carpenter. Not only are they knocked out here early, they are, by the way, taking the car back to the garage. These are the uh, crew guys still out here on pit road, but the car and the rest of the crew is going back to the garage area, and they're going to try to get back out. So we take a look at Charlie Kimball coming in down low. But they also had a transporter fire uh, on the way back from the test at Fontana that nearly destroyed their Indy 500 pole car. They did recover that, but it's been a really rough and expensive couple of weeks for the Fuzzies crews. We see Ed jogging back to pit road. Marty? Yeah, I wish uh, Hinch would stop jogging. I can't keep up with him. So uh, I thought you were after someone. Were you just blowing off some steam or what? Yeah, I mean, not not thrilled about that. I uh, I mean, I really have to pee. <laughs> I hydrated for 90 lap. That's a good point. When you when you got to go, you got to go, right? I mean, you know, I hydrated for a 90 lap race in 90 degree weather, and that didn't really work out for us. And just, uh, man, I'm furious. There's, uh, there's, I mean, I, I know what happened. Uh, I don't want to talk about what happened. All the matter. Mad at your team? I'm, I'm mad. I'm mad we're out of the race. You know, it's, it's just, uh, it's really unfortunate. Um, we had a good starting spot outside of the third row, and the, uh, you know, the, the pink goat Eddie car that was going to be quick over the distance. You know, these guys are always good in stops and good on strategy, and it just sucks that we don't get the chance to, uh, to try and put that, that pink car in victory lane because I think we had a strong one. You say you know what happened. What did happen? Yeah, it's. I don't want to get into it here. It's just, uh, it, you know. <laughs> it's just one of those things, man, you know. Uh, the bad news is I don't get to just leave and put this one behind me. The good news is we get a chance to do it again tomorrow. So, Is your frustration with yourself or the team? Uh, it's all over the place. I'm just frustrated, you know. And I'm in the right uh, right now. It's like I said, it's an unfortunate situation. I feel bad for the guys for sure. You know, we've had troubles all weekend with something uh, electrical on the car, and then we finally got it sorted for qualifying. Did what I think was a pretty good job in qualifying to get the GoDaddy car up there. And, you know, we were ready, man. It was go time, and, uh, and we didn't go. So... We'll regroup. We'll get in tomorrow. I'll, I'll come down. It's just, it's tough, man. It's tough to, to come all this way, work this hard, especially the kind of weekend that we've all had here in the series, uh, and to not be able to go and, and put on a show for the fans here, for GoDaddy, and, uh, you know, for the, the finish I know my guys deserved. Yeah, we thank you for your time. We appreciate that. We saw the car heading back to the paddock. It is a short day for James Hinchcliffe, but we'll see him tomorrow. Plenty still to come as we continue racing from Houston on a very hot, humid day. You know, I think the combination between myself and the team Penske is working in all aspects, in, inside the race car or inside the track, but also outside the racetrack. And uh, honestly, for me, it's uh, it's great because the highest point of my career and some of the wins that I had and the lowest time of my career, Roger and team Penske were right there, you know, supporting me. And uh, you can't top that, you know. Uh, for me, it's, uh, it's just a big family right now. We're really working together and hopefully I can get that championship that I've really chasing for a long time. The ageless Brazilian, that is Elio Castro Neves, 38 years old, but he still seems like a kid. He wants to be a champion. No shortage of drama here as our race leader, our pole sitter, Takuma Sato is in. Jan, what's going on? That is correct. He just heard the radio transmission you never want to hear. That's your right rear tire is going down. He had lost six pounds of pressure. So he will drop to the back of the order when you have a right rear that's going down. And the team confirms it was not telemetry malfunction. This tire is, in fact, down. It's under yellow. But, boy, he loses all that track position after getting the pole. Slots back in behind uh, in front of Sebastian Bourdais. So he's down in the teens. We need to uh, circle back around and pick up a story that you would have seen. Right, Tucker, while we got we were... whole race left. And listen, we got to get into survival mode. We kind of know what's going to happen today. There's going to be some carnage. Just listening to that radio transmission. We're going to circle back around and uh, fill you in on what was going on with Tristan Vautier. Remember, he was one of the ones who did an amazing job to swerve and miss the stranded James Hinchcliffe. However, he did clout the wall heavily on the right rear, and that has put paid to his chances in this race today. And that was his second big collision with the wall. Remember earlier, we showed you in those qualifying highlights, he smashed the turn 10 wall very hard. That was his backup car. That one damaged as well. It's been a costly day. Yeah, it really has. Uh, it looks like he probably broke a half shaft or something. Um, thought we thought he got away with it, but uh, afterwards, when we were looking at the wall, there's a pretty big wheel print or tire print on the wall, so he did hit it hard enough to break. So at the front of the field, the two guys who clashed on the streets of Baltimore.
when Will Power thought he had a run to go for the lead in turn one and just chopped Scott Dixon out and just drove him into the wall unintentionally. But that was just another dent in Scott Dixon's championship chase. The man behind him in the race and in the championship, Simon Pagino, runs third. Three incredibly fast drivers at the front of this pack. We just want to get some laps going. Yeah, no kidding. I think these guys are ready for it as well. Good crowd on hand here in Houston on a very hot and humid day. Yep. <laughs> AJ's using his old sprint car tricks right there, boys. There's the leak. Let's, let's get a patch. Robin, we had your uh, your opening part of the two parts uh, series sit down with with AJ. Um, I know that you've known him for such a long time. You, you call him a friend. Is it to please you a great deal? I imagine to see him at the track. Well, I think when you, he's been through everything he's been through. Come on, Lee. He's been burned, attacked by killer bees and ants and everything. And there's, of course, hey, Kimball's having where? all kinds of problems. Now he's going again. But AJ just. I mean, come on, did you stay introduced you to the crowd here? And they all cheered. I mean, they, they, everybody knows who A.J. Foyt, Mario Andretti, Parnelli Jones, they, that's the name that resonates for generations. And I think what's great about A.J. is all the health problems he's had. He said in our interview, I said, you look like you've lost 30 pounds. He says, I need to lose 50 more. So he understands it's tough on his feet to carry that weight around, but sure. he's trying a little bit. He's, he's off a of Bluebell ice cream three times a day, Lee. This is his driver in the ABC supply car, Takuma Sato, who was on the pole, led... Uh, for the first time since he led in uh, Milwaukee and he after having that uh, punctured tire he now rejoins he's in 12th position behind Canaan ahead of Bordeaux and we're looking good for a start Will Power at the front of this field in the Verizon Chevrolet comes through this sweeping turn 10 onto the front stretch let's go racing in Houston Simona Di Silvestro in a very strong position ahead of the Italian Luca Di Fili uh, Luca F uh, Filippi easy for you to say, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> the very tricky turn two complex. It's been catching a number of drivers out this weekend. Pagano, there's Simona, there's Felipe, Mike Conway ahead of his coin teammate, Joseph Newgarden trying to make a move. Frank Keady, after that 10 grid spot penalty for an engine change, is mired in the pack and so too is our points leader, Castro Neves. It's a really fast section of the racetrack. They just fly through this right hander. Pizzo's taking a look. Looks like he's going to pull it off. Nice move. Nice move on Luca Felipe there from EJ Viso. James Jakes is well placed. He is that silver and purple car. Oh, wow, that's Wilson. Oh, that was Conway, rather. All out of shape. Nice save, though. I'll tell you what, he had that thing going. And that's the thing about this race track that I love. It's so wide. You're, it, it, you can make those passes, or you can at least present yourself so another driver can see that you're coming. Conway did a nice job saving that. Look at the two coin drivers, Justin Wilson chasing Mike Conway. Remember, Mike won at the first doubleheader this year on the streets of Belle Isle, Detroit. It is frantic mid-pack, isn't it? Wilson on the inside. Sato goes over that curb, trying to get on the inside of Tony Kanaan. That, that's a tough place to, to try to outbreak somebody on that corner. Sebastian Bourdais was another one who got pushed back after a uh, an engine change. So he slid down the order after qualifying in the top 10, did really well. This is Tony Kanaan. Three more races with KB Racing Technologies before he becomes a Ganassi driver. Up front, Scott Dixon has reeled in Will Power. Power got a great start at the restart. Was able to skip away a little bit, but there's nothing between the Penske and Ganassi guys. Scott is, well, both well, these guys are very strong on these type of racetracks, but like I said earlier, I mean, you know, Dixon knows what he's got to do. He's got to get maximum points here. He knows that the three cars back in traffic right now, so he's going. And how refreshing is it to see Simona Di Silvestro running up in the top five? There she is, right there in fourth spot, doing a nice job just ahead of EJ Viso. Spread out, in fact, in the top five as they work into a rhythm. Let's check in with Jan. Graham Rahal has decided to come in. It's it's not a problem with the car. They decided they want to go off strategy. They want to be one of the first cars to stop. Graham Rahal has not had a good weekend. And they're hoping that maybe by pitting now, this will play later if there's a lot of caution. And that's what you do when your weekend's not going your way. Marco, Was that Marco? Marco made a nice pass there. Yet to win. And, oh, there comes James Jakes. Dive bombing in there. Hard to believe, isn't it, that Marco Andretti 
is still in this championship chase and has not won a race this year. There have been a couple of occasions where he could have, he should have, but it's just eluded him. This could be his day on the streets of Houston. He's been making up positions, he's doing a nice job. He's made up two since the restart, he's made up four from the initial start. Well, Wilson's Gilles car looks awfully three. strong, Gilles he's going to take three. a look underneath. <laughs> That's Justin Wilkin has been very fast this weekend. We've got Conway right there. Yeah, well, he was fastest in practice on Friday yesterday, and he was a little disappointed with qualifying today. He said, our car is so good on the long runs, it just takes a while to come in. And in their session, they really only had one lap because there was an accident in that first session of qualifying today. He said, on the long runs, we'll be terrific. We have a top five car. I promise I'm going to be aggressive getting there. And looks like he's doing that right now, doesn't he? Certainly does. James Jakes coming oh. from way back on Felipe. Squeezes alongside, but Luca will not allow it to happen. Driving that Barracuda racing, the Brian Herter Autosport car, the blue and orange machine at the front of that pack. That was good driving. Those guys left just enough room for each other to get through there side by side. Talking about the fight for seventh. You ride with James Jakes in eighth at the moment. The Dale Coin Racing teammates are having a good scrap. The two Englishmen, there they are, Justin Wilson and Mike Conway. Let's show you how close that move was. On board with James Jakes, straddling the curb. Yeah, but and Jakes did a good job, like I said, staying off of that car. Made a little bit of contact, but it's like three cars in, Jan. Elio Castro Neves, the points leader, is doing something very similar to what we saw for Graham Rahal. He comes in and makes that change of tires, goes to the red side wall of Firestone, again, hoping to be early in case there's a lot of caution to play pit strategy. Lap 13 will log that one away for Elio Castro Neves after starting 21st. Working a little different strategy, he comes out ahead of Graham Rahal, you saw in the background. James Jakes has finally got that position away from Luca Filippi. And Wilson thought about it as well. I think if Wilson can get clear, I think he's going to go. But I tell you what, he can't make a mistake because you see Conway's teammate was right there taking a look. All these guys, look at all these cars stacked up. One guy makes a little bit of a mistake, he's going to lose a lot of spots. And look how and look how quick Jakes has pulled away. I think Luca might be holding these boys up. It's half a second at the front in between race leader Will Power and Scott Dixon. Simon Pagano is still third, Simona Di Silvestro fourth, and EJ Viso fifth. And I think you're right, Rob. I think this is Wilson probably losing a little bit of patience right now, and he's going to have to force the issue here because I believe you're right. He is holding these guys up a lot. We first saw Luca Felipe drive for Brian Herter at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course earlier this year. And he and J.R. Hildebrand are tag-teaming the final races in this season. He'll do this one. Inside move. Look at this. This is nice work from Justin Wilson. And Andy Sebastian Bourdais. Wow, Bourdais on Canaan. That was a decisive move. And that's what Justin needed to do. He had to force the issue, and he got the pass. Now I bet you see just Wilson drive away now. Justin Wilson is one of those guys, one of the six competitors who have raced here on the Reliant Park street course before, back in the champ car days. Newgarden looking at something. Franchitti is in. Dario Franchitti is in. So we've seen Ray Hall, Castro Nevis, and now the first of the Ganassi threesome in. Four, three, two, Dario Franchitti one. comes in early. I talked with Barry Wanzer, helps on strategy with this team. He said it's always fluid, but we're ultimately going to try to come in as soon as we can. He goes to red stickers, but you have to be very cognizant of where you're going to come back out on track. You can't go down a lap, and you can't come out stuck in the middle of a pack. Dario did well in qualifying, but again, to revisit that story, he had an unapproved engine change and dropped all 10 clear, positions. So can he get out ahead of Elio Castro Neves? No, is the... Uh, Ball there, and Ray Hall will be doing his best to try and get by Dario. Nothing's changed up front, it's still power over Dixon, around about that half a second margin. The Penske car over the Ganassi machine. Boy, this could be a big points haul weekend for Scott Dixon. He's going to need to repeat what he did in Toronto. Thomas Bray doing it right now. Oh, wow, look at that. That's a really hard corner. These guys are just spread the needles through there. want to take you back just a few minutes ago the restart and some radio transmissions with our front runners let's listen obviously didn't review the start that well because uh, the 12 car also uh, 
launched the floor I'm going to get it jerked quite a bit. We could clearly see that, and, but we saw exactly what you were talking about. You know, Dixon's complaining about your start. He's complaining you chopped him. It's pretty much the same old story. Jumped it and I jumped it. Wouldn't worry about it. It's kind of the same old thing. Ah, the rivalry goes on, not only between Dixon and Power, but Ganassi and Penske. First and second, that's what it looks like after a very scrappy couple of starts. We're up into a good rhythm and a good pace right now. Pagano in that blue and white and black car, the HP machine for Schmidt. Hamilton Motorsports runs third. And then Simona Di Silvestro, the lead KV Racing Technology cars. The Swiss driver doing well, backing up her top five result on the streets of Baltimore a month ago. She started the season in a very strong manner, and it's good to see her finishing it in the same way. Will she be at KB Racing next year? That's another one of the silly season rumours that are going around. There's so many seats in the IZOD IndyCar Series yet to be determined. Running in fourth and has been there for the majority of the race. Can she put the KB Racing machine on the podium here in Houston? She's got two shots at doing it and there's a strong possibility. Streaming four in one mosaic. Inside, inside, inside. Be smart, be smart here. Live pit crew chatter. Riding shotgun from green flag to checkered. That's powerful. Download IndyCar 13 now, only from Verizon. Your car. It's been your wingman, dining room, and best friend, baby maker, and baby soother. At Pennzoil, we know it doesn't matter what you do in your car, it only matters what you put in it. That's why Pennzoil is designed to give you unsurpassed engine protection, so you can protect your car and the memories made in it. Save 50 cents per gallon on Shell fuel with a five-quart purchase of Pennzoil synthetics. Make it a Pennzoil change. Legendary durability, impressive mileage, Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. When it comes to doing what you love, more is better. That's why we designed the all-new Nissan Versa Note with more technology to get you into and out of tight spots and more space so that you always have your favorite stuff. And just for good measure, an incredibly efficient 40 MPG highway so that when you're doing more, you're spending less. The all-new Nissan Versa Note. Your door to more. Now get a 139 per month lease on a 2014 Nissan Versa Note. All the memories, all the mayhem, all the adventures have led to this. Quick, give me some sugar. Bring home the epic finale of the Hangover Trilogy. This is the best day of my life! The Hangover Part 3. Own the Blu-ray or digital HD. The Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston continues live here on NBCSN as we welcome you back to our continuing coverage and it is getting hot at the front. Dixon was as close as he's been in this race to Will Power for the lead of this motor race and is really starting to push the issue. Yeah, he, he had a little bit of an opportunity. He was right on the back of Power and there was a caution out, a, a local caution. We couldn't make the move there, but as you can see, and there's Kanan in trouble. Tony Kanaan, the Indy 500 winner, the man who's created headlines this weekend. It was announced officially yesterday that he's headed to Chip Ganassi Racing next year, leaving KV Racing Technology. Keeps it running, there'll be no caution. So over on the back part of the circuit, mm, here comes the lap. top two, yep, so he goes down a lap. Meanwhile, his teammate, Simona Di Silvestro, maintains a very strong fourth place. However, these two guys here have a massive margin. They've got five seconds over the third place, Simon Pagano. Not so sure Kanan doesn't have some issues. I think he's headed to pit lane right now. 
You'll notice the guys, uh, the competitors, when they come down under the Pennzoil Bridge there, which is officially turn one, it's that left-hand sweeper, they, you'll see them really aggressively swerve to the left-hand side of the track. That is to avoid the huge bump that was ground down. Kanan shaking his head. The Hydroxy Cup machine is in trouble. I'll show you what happened to TK. Uh, you can hear. There she goes. Yeah, Sutton looks like Sutton gave up in the, the end. He, he lost the brakes, guys. The brake temperatures went through the roof. That was the view from Oriel Servia's National Guard Panther machine of Tony Kanan exiting the race. Tell us more, Kev. That's it, the brakes, and they've shut the car off at this point. They're trying to figure out if it can be salvaged, but it certainly doesn't look good at this point. It's been a, it's been a good weekend, but a bad weekend for Tony Kanon. If you're just joining us, while it is a frantic and cracking pace at the front, the attrition rate is equally as high. James Hinchcliffe stalled on the second standing start and got clouded by Ed Carpenter. Instantly, both of those guys were out. As a result of taking evasive action, as Hunter Ray comes into the pits, Tristan Vautier slammed the wall. He's out of the race, and Tony Kanon may be our fourth retirement in just 22 laps. Here's Hunter Ray. And Ryan Hunter Ray has been struggling all weekend. Says that his car feels like it's staying on top of the bumps. They've been changing the car to try to get mechanical grip. Now he needs a quick pit stop. And that was just under eight seconds. Hoping that some of these changes will bring some of the speed back to the DHL machine. One thing we haven't explained yet this weekend, you'll see all of the Andretti Autosport cars running oh, pink. Go hard, go hard. Pink wall tires as Hunter Ray scrambles to try and beat Dario Franchitti down to that turn two complex. It's all about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Wow. Hey, that's tough to beat. When you come out on cold tires like that, you're trying to keep a guy behind you that has a lot of heat in the, in the tires. Dardo does a nice job getting by him, and Ryan did everything he could. Ryan Hunter Ray did everything he could. Uh-oh. Major Ray. issues. Major issues for our points leader. This is his second visit to pit lane. You can't shift it at all? Oh, no. Okay, we'll change the cluster. This is huge. Okay, we're gonna change the posture. Not only was there mega frustration after not qualifying well, now some mechanical issues are plaguing the captain's championship leader. And Elio can't believe it. How many times has this happened to him? I, as far as being in a position to win the championship, going into the end of the season, and things going wrong, young. You may have heard on the radio, we will change the cluster. That, of course, is the whole gear stack itself. So they have to pull the back of the gearbox off. This is going to be a long stop for Castro Neves. And, and it really not, it's really not surprising, as rough as this racetrack is, no, um, no, it, it's extremely hard on the drive line and the gearbox because this place is so bumpy. You got heavy loads um, on the fast part of these racetracks, which is bumpy. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at the points. Yeah. And one thing changes dramatically. This man here, one of his claims to fame this year is that he was the only driver in this championship to complete 100% of the laps. That has now changed. Wilson is in. Lee can't quite see it, but the left rear for Justin Wilson completely flat when they came to pit road. You guys just talking about how rough this racetrack is. Chalk that up as the second tire to go down today. A lot of debris out on the racetrack as well. They did cut the left rear. Justin said, I've been sliding around everywhere. You see where he tries to cycle out. They did determine flat left rear brought him in a little bit early. So second tire issue we've seen as far as going down. Takuma Sato was the other one. Let's check in with Sato. Where is he? He's running in 13th place after being forced to pit under yellow earlier in this race after putting it on pole and leading the early laps. This is the frantic activity at, at the uh, Shell Pennzoil camp for Team Penske and Elio Castro Neves. And, and really, they're going to make this change. Obviously, they're going to lose a ton of laps on this thing, and all they can hope for is to go back out and have other cars drop out to make that, uh, up a few points. But, boy, they're going to be, I mean, i got to figure they're going to be 8, 9, 10 laps down. And that's something they avoided all season. They yeah. haven't had anything happen to them, and that's how you nice the championships. Wow. This is for third place. Oh, oh, no. Very, so very strong. strong. Oh, that was a good one on Simon Pagano. Good job. Good job gets encouragement from Gerald Tyler, her race engineer. 
a man who has seen it all in motorsport. So if you talk about points and you take a look down the order with that attrition rate that I was talking about earlier as Serbia goes through on the inside of Marco Andretti, the worst that Castro Neves can finish is 20th. He would get 10 points in this Stay race. That's Stay the worst out. he can do. Because he's completed more laps than Canaan, Votier, Carpenter and Hinchcliffe. We'll continue to watch that. Let's take you back and show you a really slick, decisive pass. Yeah, this is textbook right here. She had a good run on Pagano. She went in a little bit deeper, which outbreak in Pagano was not a simple feat. She did a really good job keeping the car under control. It's beautiful. It's like St. Pete. She had uh, the run she had St. Pete. Kevin. Marco Andretti started 10th. He's been running consistently in the top 10. He was cautiously optimistic going into this race. A little bit longer on the stop as he runs it, but he's away. He said the car is comfortable, but that's not always fast. Marty? Well, Kevin, this is a left rear tire that came off of Justin Wilson's car. You can see the absolute slice through here and through there where the left rear tire was really cut for Justin Wilson. And it happened right before he came to pit road. Very fortunate timing for Justin Wilson running in the top 10. They were able to get that left rear off. But again, as you guys mentioned, second tire issue we've had today with it being cut on the racetrack. Marty, is there contact? Did he make contact? Is there, there, there anything there was, on there, the wheel? I was told it was a cut from something on the racetrack. There was not contact that created that yeah, it's just I'll check on that that's what i was told yeah it's just an interesting spot on the tire for it to be cut uh, but yeah and this is marco andretti who is sandwiched between race leader will power and the second place scott dixon and we need to update you that pagano after losing that third spot to simona di silvestro has pitted he's been serviced and sent and this is a little frustrating here for Scott Dixon. He'll be wanting to clear Marco Andretti because he's seeing Will Power skip away. Yeah, exactly. And, and Power caught it right. He got past Marco. And this is this is perfect for Power if you can get somebody hung up behind you. And that's what's happened to Scott. But, well, I tell you what, these strategies and pit stops are all over the map. I hope you keep it back in this journey. Yeah, yeah we got it. We got it. We've got our finger on it. We are racing lap 29, so we're almost at third race distance of this first of two 90 lappers in this double header weekend here in Houston and after being on the tail being on his gearbox Scott Dixon is now almost two seconds in arrears of will power power is escaping lessons every racetrack is full of them each turn a pop quiz high or low Go. Today's lesson is the edge at a 200 miles per hour. Class begins. And the Acorn Stirless team is going to have to make a pit stop. We'll have to make this a quick one to stay in his current position. Yep, the car is up and it looks like it'll be four tires and fuel. Hold on, where's the driver going? This is a bit of a surprise, folks. He seems to have disappeared. What must the poor pit crew be thinking? I know what I'd be thinking. Whatever he's doing, it better not take long. In all my years of broadcasting, I have never seen anything like this. All right, he's back. And none too soon, I tell you. Acorn stair lids. Installed in no time flat. Oh, come on! That's a hole! I hate watching with Ramsey. All he does is yell. They can't hear you, Ramsey. But every time he's come over this year, we've won. And he always brings Bud Light. Little dog won't come out from under the couch. But we're winning. I love you, Ramsey. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. Wednesday Night Rivalry, Blackhawks, Blues, Wednesday at 7 Eastern on the NBC Sports Network. For those of you just joining us for the Shell and Pennzoil 
Grand Prix of Houston. Massive news, massive championship implications for Elio Castro Neves, the man who'd completed 100% of the laps this year. The man who boasted a 49-point championship lead has been sitting stationary for seven laps. And you talk about that number of laps, I can tell you the time on pit road is now 7 minutes and 49 seconds as they're getting ready to fire and fuel this car up. Now, of course, he lost all those laps on the racetrack, but wow, hats off to the Penske crew. That was a very quick gear stack change. That was some of the best mechanical work you'll see. And you've heard us say it time and time again, it's worth doing that because every point in a championship counts. How many times have we seen championships decided by a solitary point? Right, That's why cool. it's worth green, digging green. deep. And after that gearbox issue has been rectified, Castro Neves is on his way. Clear, clear, clear. So now he's just got to basically just drive and hope that some other people have some problems ahead of him. Been a good day for EJ Vizo and his Sitco sponsored car who have a big headquarters here in Houston. It's a massive weekend for him. He was as high as fourth on the pit stop cycle after Simon Pagano came in. Back at the front though, this is where the action is. These guys have been going at it hard right from the start. Will Power, Scott Dixon, Team Penske, Target Chip Ganassi Racing. For Will Power, mathematically, yes, he still could win the championship. However, it's a long shot. For this man here, he is really in the championship hunt now for his third title after those problems to Elio Castro Neves. Now, getting up to pit stops here. I'm not sure what you would do, Rob, and I think if I was in Dixon's spot, I would, I'd probably pit, try to pit a lap earlier. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see if they, if they pull him in at the same time. Because of traffic, Wally? Yeah. Yeah. I, they're in a league of their own, Robin and Wally. How much so? They are eight and a half seconds actually more ten seconds ahead of the third place Simona Di Silvestro. So you got some danger there right now and, and it's gonna hold up power here a little bit. If it, if it was close to the window boy if I was Dixon I'd hit pit lane. Oriel Serbia serviced and sent. Marty? Well guys the game within the game Will Power asked Tim Sendrick can I run a different fuel number? In other words, can I go a little bit quicker? Tim Sendrick said, no, you need to save the fuel right now. And the game for Will Power is you've got to save fuel, be faster than Scott Dixon and keep him behind him, behind you. And oh, by the way, go one lap further than him if you can when everybody comes to the pit stall. Scott Dixon just radioed to Mike Hall, said the car is starting to go away really bad. These guys should pit any moment now. But a, a cat and mouse game going on right now between Will Power and Scott Dixon. Well, Power's doing a pretty good job, Marty, you know, hitting his nose and doing all those things that they're asking him to do. Obviously, he's very, very fast, and, you know, if he is trying to get to that number, but... And if Scott Dixon's car is going away, he's doing a pretty good job of keeping up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Now racing lap 34 of this 90 lapper. They're in the window to make it a two-stop race. Fairly straightforward. It's been a cracking pace at the front, and they continue to skip away from Simona Di Silvestro. And I, and I thought they were going to be on top of Saavedra, but you know what? Saavedra's holding his own right there. Here's the best looking Indy car I've seen in a long time, Rob. And it was painted by Sarah Fisher's family. They have a paint shop. It's not that's not a decal, Strike, it's a paint shop. Strike Energy car or yep. Joseph Bugar. It looks great. James Jakes has just pitted as well. He has had a solid run today. Oh, Down into turn two. Wow. Wilson and Serbia. And Oriel had to take evasive action there. And it's, and it's nice they had that option, or there would have yeah. been a wreck there. Um, you know, you, if, if you make the pass there and take that inside, you just have to get the spot back. So, you to really You'll press the pass if you need it. Well, he's going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> the top five cars in this race yet to pit. No, that means it? it's Power, Conway? Dixon. Yeah, Conway, Conway on his teammate. Power, Dixon, Di Silvestro, Felipe, and Bordet are yet to pit. Almost look like... Wilson had to lift there a little bit, and, and it was enough for Conway to have a run on him. Both these guys have the same story, and these guys, I mean Mike Conway, Justin Wilson, not only are they both British, but they've both been intermixing and blending sports car racing with their Indy car racing, and they are thoroughly enjoying both disciplines. It's just time about uh, being about time in the car, right, Wally? Whenever yep. you're driving. Seat time is, it doesn't matter what, it, what you're in, seat time is everything. Mike's coming off a uh, couple of victories in the World Endurance Championship in the LMP2 class. He could mathematically win that World Endurance Championship 
uh, if everything goes, he and his teammates way later this year. The Conway's a little bit quicker than Serbia. Serbia doing a good job, you know, holding his own. But that first two or three quarters, obviously Conway was quicker. These guys are down in 18th and 19th place at the moment on that pit stop cycle. Still at the front, there's nothing between Power and Dixon. Three tenths of a second, that is it. And they're now almost 11 seconds ahead of Simona Di Silvestro in third. Well, we're, it was a little bit of a rocky start, but once we got going, the rhythm and pace has been spectacular on a very demanding 1.7 mile circuit. Any lap now, Scott Dixon in second place will come in. The target team are ready, Marty. And the handling finally going away to the point that Scott Dixon did finally want to come down pit road. Will Power will pit on the next lap. You see Dixon come to a stop in his stall. It just marks perfectly. It'll be sticker primary tires for Scott Dixon. An air pressure adjustment and a longer time on the left front. It took a little bit of time for Scott Dixon. Kevin? Simone Di Silvestro pits out of the third position. She started fifth. She's run with the leaders all day. They went down a little bit on tire pressure. They've also been concerned about the brakes overheating. But they felt like they got them cooled down towards the end of that stint. Now, it's also the, the outlap that Dixon does here, too, is really, really important. To see if he got out without any traffic and power catches any traffic, exactly. it's going to be interesting to see who comes out in the lead after these pit stops. You may have noticed there that Simon Pagino beat Simona Di Silvestro after Simona had executed a pass on track. While Simon has been out there pounding around, he was able to beat Simona out of the pits now. This is where the pressure and tension rises. All the pressure now swings on Team Penske to execute a perfect stop for Will Power. Here he is, he's in the lane, and we will eagerly watch for where Scott Dixon is. How good is this outlap by the target Chip Ganassi racer? Marty. That's exactly what they wanted, Lee. They got one lap more out of that fuel run than Scott Dixon did. And some trouble, they could not get the jack to go up. You hear Tim Sendrick say, we got to go up. The jack did not go up. This will cost Will Power a little bit of time. 9.2, let's see where he cycles out with Dixon. Keep an eye up, Here he is, Scott Dixon. Side by side and easily beats Will Power. So that was a spectacular outlap and a little bit of trouble on the Penske side. Right, that, I think that was the, the right call for the Ganassi guys to do, try to pull him in a little bit earlier. But those outlaps after you make the pit stop are so important. And Dixon is, well, both these guys are really good getting out on cold tires. Here's the story, guys. 7.4 seconds to stop for Dixon, 9.2 for power. And while power pitted, so too did Sebastian Bourdais in the Dragon Racing entry making his way very effectively through the field after getting a grid spot penalty for an engine change. Enjoying the ride with Charlie Kimball. Boy, this is a punishing circuit. That just really underscored how challenging it is physically. Luca Filippi. Yes, and he's able to go a lap longer than Will Power, of course. And he said his problem early on was that the tire pressure... Oh, that's a good one. That was under eight seconds. Now they've added more tire pressures for Luca, saying that earlier on when he was struggling, it needed the tire pressures to come up. Now he has what he wants. There's radio trouble at the AJ Foyt racing team with the ABC supply car of Takuma Sato. Apparently, the team has requested for Sato to be black flagged to get him to come in because they can't communicate to him. Good way to do it. Remember pit boards? Oh, <laughs> pit, pit, I ran a pit board for a couple of years at the Indy 500 while, oh, Dario turned it around. Tough weekend for the multi-time Indy 500 winner and series champion. Tough year. Yeah. Yep. First time we've seen a full course yellow since that initial standing start. Sorry, the second standing start where James Hinchcliffe stalled it. We saw a lot of stoppages throughout yesterday's practice sessions. The guys just getting to grips with this track, didn't we? It was a pretty messy day. Well, like you said, Lee, this place is very bumpy. It's very physical. Not to mention it's about 90 degrees with 100, almost 99% humidity out there. So... <clears throat> But Wally and I were talking to the break, Lee, you got to give these fans a lot of credit. The, the grandstands are pretty well full here in the front straightaway, and it's 94 degrees, and it's 100% humidity. And our camera guys who have been out there yep. all day long. Absolutely. 
It's been a very challenging weekend. You heard James Hinchcliffe tell Marty earlier, I have been hydrating for a 90 lap race. So from 49, look at the top right hand side of your screen, from 49 points coming into today's first race of this double header weekend, the points as they run now would evaporate to eight. Dixon is really in this, Pagano is really in this, and Penske, Team Penske for Elio Castro Neves cannot believe their luck. Bad luck, that is. This is a replay of the pit stop. Well, it's, just, it's just a jack didn't come up. That's why they couldn't get the car the wheels off. The jack was a little bit the car up. I, think, I mean, it doesn't look like much, guys, but when you're talking about a second, a second and a half, that's a lot when there's a car up to speed that you're trying to race that's on the race track. Yep. And we're hearing uh, an update that they may put the sweeper out as well. They'll make the most of this portion to clean the track as they go out to rescue the stranded Dario Franchitti. Back in a moment. Under our third full course caution here at the Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston live here on NBCSN, your home of open wheel racing. And this was due to the stranded Dario Franchitti needing rescuing. It has been a fascinating race at the front between Scott Dixon for Target Chip Ganassi Racing and the Verizon Chevrolet of Will Power. And in behind him, you may have noticed his teammate Elio Castro Neves. For those of you just turning on, big story of the day. That car there, that driver there, lost some seven or eight laps and has seen his rather healthy championship lead evaporate to this man here, Scott Dixon. Marty? Well, Lee, you mentioned the problems for our championship leader, Elio Castroneves, and we'll take you through the field under caution here with 42 laps complete here in Houston. They just told Scott Dixon on the radio about the problems for Elio Castroneves, and, you know, I'm not an expert or anything, but I could tell the tone in Scott Dixon's voice changed. Much calmer, much different in the feedback to the team. He now knows he is in position to get back in this championship game for sure with two races left in the season after today's race. Will Power right behind him. He is still in the second position. He was very calm, told us guys on the radio that's all right after the bad stop. We will get it back. We are faster than Scott Dixon. We can get past him on the racetrack. We skip over Elio Castro Nevis to Simon Pagano. On the first run, he said, my car was bottoming out so bad they did fix that. A wing change, air pressure changes. The third guy in the championship, don't forget about him, came in 70 points out. Right now, 45 points out of the championship lead, Jan. And it was a great break for Luca Filippi who made that late pit stop. And they have learned, as I mentioned during the pit stop, he likes higher tire pressure. Now he has that. You can see him trying to keep the tires clean at the moment, but they love their position at the moment. Sebastian Bourdais has worked his way from 14th to 5th. Remember, he was quick and qualified, qualified 4th. We look at Bourdais there, and he's made his way back up, and he knew that he might have the same opportunity like he did in Baltimore. Remember, he started 22nd there and still finished on the podium. Behind Bourdais is Simona Di Silvestro. Keep an eye on this car because of a close call just moments ago. Dario Franchitti just had to pit just a moment ago, and this brought out the yellow from this uh, close encounter between the 78 and the 10 car. Let's see if there's any contact or how much it is. We haven't heard any report from Di Silvestro's camp of any issue. Their biggest problem and concern right now is possibly overheating with the brakes, but uh, no damage as far as the 78 is concerned, Jan. And Ryan Hunter Ray, who is the next position behind, you'll see the bright yellow colors, the DHL, now he comes into the shot. He has been having a problem with rear compliance. In other words, the car's hopping around when he hits the bumps at the rear. We're on a slightly different pit strategy, but because of these yellows, he now only has one stop, like everyone else, to the end. EJ Viso happy with his car so far. He had a good starting position in eighth, and that's where he runs right now. Michael Cannon, his engineer, said before, but because so many people got so little track time, this first stint is like a test session. Then we'll learn and see what adjustments we need to make, Jan. And, of course, Charlie Kimball was the... The cause, I guess you would say, of the aborted first standing start because of a clutch issue. As you go on board, he actually has a different steering wheel than he started the race on his second pit stop. They tried to swap that out, but he still had trouble with the clutch. He has another pit stop to come, and that's the biggest worry for them right now. Oriel Serbia running in 10th position, started 17th. They were optimistic after the good car they had at Baltimore, but it hasn't been good coming into the race, but it's getting better. Oriel just radioed in a few moments ago and said the car is really good, and I think it's going to be better by the end of a run. 
Kevin, Justin Wilson had that flat left rear tire earlier, pitted a little bit earlier than they would have liked to, and he's a little bit frustrated with lap traffic. Dale Cohen told him, listen, get back in the saddle and focus on what you've got to do. And if it comes down to conditioning day, this guy rides 50 miles a day in the mountains of Colorado. I think conditioning is fine for Justin Wilson. And, of course, Takuma Sato also has a cycling background, but he had no radio earlier on. We reported that. He made a 17-second pit stop. They've now reconnected his helmet. All is good. Mike Conway has not had the day that he was hoping for, but it's not that unexpected. He said the car is very similar to in Toronto when he qualified 20 and 23rd and just through attrition and hanging in there, he finished 7th in both of those races. He said that's what it's going to take again here today. Marty? Well, we talked about, Kevin, that fantastic paint job for Joseph Newgarden. You see him back there in the chrome car. There he comes in the picture right there. It took 500 man hours. And, yes, I said paint job. That is paint on Joseph Newgarden's car. At the end of that run, they told him, you were the fastest car at the very end of the run. They were able to make their way into the top ten last time. And, Marty, for James Jakes, he is back. He has had a very fast car, but there was a radio miscommunication. They told him to pit. Then they changed their mind and said, no, 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 don't pit. He drove through the pit lane and had to make two stops. That's why he lost all the track position. Back to racing, and it's Dixon at the front. Power in pursuit. Look at this here. Luca Felipe feels racy on Simon Pagano. Looks for an inside run. He's going for it. The Italian pulls it off. Wow. That was a bold move from Luca Felipe, and he did it. <laughs> that was a really good move. I don't know about but I think Pagano is going to be out for blood after that one. There has been a lot said about Luca Filippi. We can give his background, his racing history, but here in the States, everybody has just simply been impressed. They like the way the guy drives. He's fast, he's aggressive, and he gets it done. Looks like we're Dave. Take a look at one thing about I've noticed on Filippi's car. His car looks like it's really good in the short run, but on the long run, he's having some trouble. As Bourdais takes the position from Pagano, again, Pagano's car better on the long run, so he struggles on these restarts. And look at that. Don't forget Kevin Tolder Simona on the inside of Simon Pagano. He's lost two positions, three wow. positions on this. Absolutely awesome. Two. I won't make it three. Hunter Ray didn't get by. But uh, Simon Pagano has got his hands full on this first flying lap. It's getting back to Sebastian Bourdais. Remember, he won here in 2006 2007 on the streets of the Reliant Park Stadium circuit in the Champ Car World Series. Looks like Pagano's on the harder tires as well. A lot of these guys like to see the Reds on uh, Hunter Ray's car. He is, guys, and we talked about all the debris that's on the race track. You see Viso go underneath the chicane there, and that's what happened to Simon Pagano. Got into a little bit of de debris, we call it marbles. Got that on his tires. Going to take a few laps to get that off, guys. Pretty impressive run from Ryan Hunter Ray, you know, considering the defending champion started in 15th. Wide, wide goes to Kumasato and lost a position. Meanwhile, Serbia. look at this. Yep. Serbia is under pressure. Justin Wilson couldn't quite pull it off. Serbia put his car in a nice position there in the middle of the road. Yeah, that was that was a really good defensive move without really being a defensive move. Yeah, he kind of ran down the middle of the track. Didn't quite give Justin enough room there to safely make the pass. And yet, don't forget, we heard Justin was very you know frustrated with some of these guys. So again, he's going to have to force the issue to make these passes. Back in the pack. How far back? 20th for our championship leader, Elio Castro Neves. We know that many of you turn on at different times throughout the broadcast. The big story involves this man. His championship lead has almost disappeared. He had 49 points coming into today's race. Points as they run now, his lead would be trimmed to just eight. Gearbox issues on the Shell Pennzoil Chevrolet. For Team Penske, they came in, the guys did an awesome job to get it rectified and sent him back out. And he's down in 20th position out of this race. We yet to get an update on Tony Kanan. He had issues. He's down in 21st. Vautier, Carpenter and Hinchcliffe are definitely retirements from this race. Hey, Lee, Shell, Shell and Penzoil have done such a good job promoting this race. Mike Langan was telling me he's never had a title sponsor as active as these guys in radio, television, newspaper, magazine ads. They want to come back next year. It's awful hot today. The race is probably going to be in late June, and he's trying to get a night race, a night doubleheader. I think that'd be great for the fans and the crew. You don't have to sit in these aluminum seats when it's 95 degrees beating down on you. And, and, and a night, night street race is just spectacular. Yeah. I mean, be, well, just look at, awesome look at Singapore. Look at the Singapore Absolutely. Grand Prix. And Champ yeah. Car ran here at, at night, and it was a hell of a show. It, looks, it just looks faster. Let's ride with Pagano. Hunter Ray just 
keeping the pressure there from 15th to 7th, RHR. Like I said earlier, I think Pagano's car is a lot better after he runs five or six laps. See how rough this racetrack is. While you drove around it, it's real wide going into the corner, so, so, so it invites you to, to, to dive bomb. It really people. does. And that's what I love about this street course, is it is wide on the entry, so it gives you plenty of room to try to make a pass and get underneath somebody, you know, without getting in the marbles or getting into the walls. You know, I, I love the layout of this place. They could just get the bumps out of it for next year. It'll really be fantastic. Whoa, did you see Hunter right there? Back you, now. you guys, you hear Rob Edwards on the radio saying it's coming back to you now. Wally, I was going to say, take us in the helmet of a driver. He was third a moment ago. Now he's sixth. He got those marbles on his tire. So it's kind of a game for the driver. You've got to not be frustrated by what happened. Be calm and still try to work your way back through the field. But don't abuse your tires either, right? Yeah, he's got a good He's got a good race car, uh, Marty, and that's half the battle. I think if he gets back on the reds, he's going to be in a lot better position as far as the car, how the car handles. Handles, but he's doing a great job right now. And he is the fastest guy on the track on that last lap. Faster than race leader Dixon, faster than Will Power, faster than any of them ahead of him. So that's why Rob Edwards said it's coming back to you, mate. Just hang in there. So we're into the second half of the first of two races here at the Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston on what could be a pivotal race and pivotal round for this man, Scott Dixon. Maybe you've already heard what they're saying about the Nissan Altima. And we have to admit that it's all true. But don't just take their word for it. Check it out for yourself. The award-winning Nissan Altima. Nissan. Innovation that excites. Now get $179 per month lease on the 2013 Nissan Altima. now only from Verizon the scientists at Shell have created Shell V power premium gasoline which actively cleans for better performance helping make the roads more exciting to drive choose Shell V power premium gasoline performance that excites Shell is a proud sponsor of the Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston. Legendary durability. Impressive mileage. Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Stop can. Let it flow. It's Miller time. It is a beautiful day in H-Town. Houston turning it on for round 17 of the 19 round IZOD IndyCar Series. This is the Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston. Look at those two monstrous structures. The Astrodome and then Reliance Stadium side by side and that's where we are racing. Standing starts, the order of the day. However, Charlie Kimball had issues. He had clutch issues. And so that start had to be aborted. We turned around again to try it again, and the GoDaddy machine of James Hinchcliffe, they had issues, perhaps electrical. And James just got clipped by Tristan Bogier narrowly, but got slammed by Ed Carpenter. And that was our second full-course caution. The pole sitter and the early race leader, Takuma Sato, had a, a, a punctured tyre. It was going down. He was forced to pit. That was agonising. That's 24. Our points leader has gearbox problems. They came in, they changed the cluster, which you see there on the bottom of the screen. They did a good job, but he's nine laps down. Yep, Elio Castro Neves after sitting there agonizingly for some seven, eight laps, watching the field go by, is back out but in 20th. And then his Penske teammate, they had some issues there with the jack and getting off that rear left tire. It cost him more than a second in comparison to Scott Dixon's stop, and Dixon was able to sweep around and take the race lead for the first time in this event. 
It was as simple as that. And look at this, Simona Di Silvestro ahead of Simon Pagano, who was getting quicker and quicker. This is the fight for a top five spot. Ryan Hunter Ray looming in the background. But gee, it's been a great day for the KB Racing Technology driver, Simona Di Silvestro. Let's hear from one of her team co-owners. Jimmy Vassar on the stand for Tony Kanaan. Unfortunately, that car out because of brake issues, but so far, so good for Simona. What are you hearing from that team? Uh, Simona's doing a great job. Uh, you know, they're out the same uh, window as, as the leaders that might play out in their favor at the end. And uh, yeah, she's just doing a great job. I hope the clear team has been on the pace this weekend. Too bad for Tony. Um, the rear brakes just went completely through the roof. Hit temperature, and, and he, he couldn't stop the car. Well, speaking of Tony, it became official this week that he's going to Ganassi next year. What's the plan for that car moving forward? Yeah, it's a, it's a good opportunity for him. We wish him well. We did our best in trying to keep him, put an offer in front of him, and uh, you know, he just turned us down. But uh, we had a great group of sponsors uh, that, that are standing behind us, and we're looking, at, looking at our, to do our best to get the best guy in the seat, or girl, I suppose, uh, uh, for next year. <laughs> so you have the sponsorship to go out and hire someone. Yeah, we're, we're, we're set to go, and uh, we're just trying to get the best possible candidate we can. All right, that's Jimmy Vassar. The 2000 winner in Houston on a different track. Look at this. Here's Simon Pagano and Simona and executes it. Nice one. Simon Pagano claws his way back into the top five. Time now for Shell to give us a look at Simona Di Silvestro in today's driver profile. The 25-year-old Swiss driver. And as we mentioned a little earlier, got the season off to a really dynamic start. And here she is here vying for another top five. Fingers crossed she can hold up onto it. And it'd really give her season a boost. She finished top five on the streets of Baltimore a month ago. And she's just got to hang in there for another 36 laps. She's got the defending series champion Ryan Hunter Wright right behind her though. Up front, Dixon has extended his lead to 2.6 seconds over Will Power. And then the new guy to the series, Luca Felipe, driving for Brian Herta Autosport, is running third. That is a really solid run. I was talking to Brian Herta, and he said, you know, this kid's so impressive. He's driving his way into our heart, and we, you know, we're definitely probably going to make him an offer to drive for us next year. And I think that's, you know, the kid had no, he had no chance in Formula One in Europe, so he came over here like a lot of guys like Justin Wilson did, and he's hoping to make a career. He's a hell of a nice, personable kid, and it's awesome. When you can jump in a race car and go to strange tracks with strange people around your car like this guy has and impress people and get the fast six like he's done, pretty spectacular. Well, he went wheel to wheel in the GP2 championship with now Formula One driver Romain Grosjean. He finished second to Grosjean in that championship several years ago. Last year, he, he just sunk in one race in GP2 at Monza and he won it. I mean, that shows you how good he is. If you can just jump in, you're not doing a championship as competitive as GP2 all the time, and you can win just straight out. Luca Felipe is a rock star, and he's showing us here today. This is Wilson. He's in. Justin Wilson here at the very beginning of his window lead because he was very frustrated with last traffic, especially Oriol Servier. So that's a big Pit here, pit early, have a clean racetrack for the rest of this run. They told him, go as hard as you can. And who knows if we may get another yellow before this race is out. We've had three cautions for a total of 12 laps so far. The lanky Englishman is back out and back chasing another solid result. As he's had on numerous occasions, he stood on the podium in the IZOD IndyCar Series this year. There's our race leader, the Kiwi, Scott Dixon. 2.1 seconds over Will Power. We know some people just can't leave things be. They wonder how much faster this thing could go. What if it weighed less or turned sharper? They know that things can always be better. We count ourselves among those people. Introducing the quicker, sleeker, smarter. Best Civic SI yet, made possible by Honda. Honda, proud partner of the IZOD IndyCar Series. For the police, this car is finished. 90,000 hard miles. But I'm hoping for another 300,000. They used Mobile One for performance. I use it to keep my cars running like new. I run Mobile One in my own car. Guess what I drive? Keep your engine running like new. Mobile One. Man, this helmet is just torture on my hair. 
Well, you gotta use head and shoulders for men. It's all you need to reach pulling all the levels of scalp and hairness. Check it. Head and shoulders for men. With seven benefits for a plate-free scalp and great-looking hair. Even if you wear a helmet for a living. I know. Head and shoulders for men. 100% plate-free. IndyCar is more than exciting. It's a way to expose young fans to real-world experiences in science, technology, engineering, and math. At the track and in the classroom, IndyCar offers the IndyCar Future of Fast STEM education program. Using the world of IndyCar to engage students with interactive, hands-on experiences and in-classroom learning. Because they are the future of fast. Go to IndyCar.com forward slash future of fast for more information. Ryan Hunter Ray hits the pit lane again here in Houston. You may have seen during the break he had made a pit stop. They were having gearbox related issues and they called him on the radio and said go to emergency mode. And here is the result. He's brought it onto pit road. They're going to check the electronics first before they go to the back of the car like we saw for Castro Neves. So not the kind of day certainly that Ryan Hunter Ray was expecting. And this is not this is something that's happened to him in the past. Stationary on pit road. Takuma Sato has taken the opportunity to make his pit stop. You see him back up to speed, hoping that maybe taking the early part of this window will pay if there's some caution. I remember saying at Baltimore, how much can Scott Dixon take? I think that's very appropriate for Brian Hunter Ray this year. How much can the defending series champion take? He just keeps getting one hit after another. It is very, very frustrating. Especially the, coming off a year. Yeah. Oh, last exactly. Year. Exactly. Because right now is when he was really hitting his stride last year, finishing that championship in the best possible way. He and Will Power going head to head right down to the final race at Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, incidentally, where we will conclude this year's Eyes on IndyCar series. There's your uh, Shell Pennzoil lap leaders. It has been very much a race dominated by Scott Dixon and Will Power as Dixon comes up on Sebastian Saavedra and Joseph Newgarden comes in. Marty standing by. Yeah, Lee, he pits from 11th. On the first stop, they went longer than everybody else. On this one, they pit a little bit shorter. Again, the traffic is frustrating everybody. That's the big factor for making the stop early in the window here for Joseph Newgarden. They've been very good on older tires, so why not take a chance right here? All right, let's keep rolling here, buddy. You hear Mike O'Gara on the radio there saying, let's get going. He had a career-high result on the podium at Baltimore a month ago. Super talented young American driver, and that was good reward for what's now been a year and a half of hard work in the IZOD IndyCar Series, almost completing his second full season. Just watching that lead margin, Wally, with much interest, it goes to anywhere from up to two and a half seconds down to now 1.7, 1.6 between Dixon and Power. Obviously, traffic affected. Yeah, but traffic... these guys are keeping each other uh, uh, yeah, close at hand, aren't they? Yeah, traffic effect for sure. Also, don't forget, Dixon's car started to go off later in his run. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, we talked to Marty during the break. I think there's some different, you know, one guy saying, go, go, go. The other guy saying, no, you can back it off a little bit. But obviously, you know, if you're in Dixon's shoes, you're not going to back it off too much when you see that power car getting larger in your mirrors. So. One thing we've been remiss to mention, Robin, is that Scott Dixon, our race leader and championship hopeful, was fined $30,000 for making disparaging remarks uh, in regards to the IndyCar race control. They said you're bringing the sport into uh, disrepute. We're not going to accept that, and we're going to hand you a, uh, a pretty hefty fine, something that uh, Dixon was not too pleased about. No, and they offer you the public service deal. Go have some autograph sessions. But I think they know deep down inside it's always good for the series. The double bird from Will Power at Loudon a couple years ago. People talk about it. You're on television. You're on Sports Center. More action on pit lane, and we're hearing that Pagano and Simona are in. Here is Simon. Yep, hitting early in this window. Uh, Lee seems to be the fad all of a sudden. Simon Pagano going with sticker primary tires very fast at the middle part of that run for Simon Pagano. Kevin? And Simona Di Silvestro makes her final stop. This is within the window. She'll be able to go the rest of the way. The car has been good. The only concern, like many, That's overheating the brakes. Boy, it's been a solid run from Simona Di Silvestro today, running in the top five for the entire race. Can she hang on? Can she keep it there? Also been super impressive from 
Sebastian Bourdais. Qualified well, got that grid spot penalty for an engine change back in the teens. And he's come from 14th, worked his way all the way. He's now running in fourth, trying to hunt down Luca Filippi. And Bourdais may be driving for, for a job next year, Lee, because I think Jimmy Vassar has made an offer to, to James Hinchcliffe, but if he wouldn't take it and he stay with Andretti, I think Bourdais is, is next up in line there. So I'm, we're not sure about Jay Penske, but Bourdais certainly still in the running for a ride maybe with KB. There you go, that point that I was just making. He's the biggest mover in the field from 14th to 4th, along with Servia and Kimball. If you know Sebastian Bourdais, you know that he doesn't mince his words. He just tells you how it is, and he's, he's kind of just a very factual guy. And and you're talking about someone who has won four open wheel titles here in North America. And he said to me yesterday, I don't know, I'm probably third or fourth on the wish list. You know, Canaan's at the top. Well, well, now we know he's going to Ganassi. Hinchcliffe is probably next. So, I don't know, I fit in there somewhere third or fourth on the list. Fingers right. crossed, hopefully. It's a guy who's a four-time champ car <laughs> titleist. And he's saying, hopefully I'll get picked up there somewhere. As Saavedra and Elio Castro Neves hit pit lane. Our points leader, who has suffered a major blow today and maintains his position, Jan, in 20th. Yes, we're both watching Elio Castro Neves make a pit stop right now, so it'll be quite noisy, but what happened with you? No, no. We see Castro Neves now left. What? Was it a gearbox-related issue? Yeah. Um, we lost pressure in the, uh, in the gear shifting mechanism, so... I don't know. It seems like it's every race right now. I'm so frustrated. That was a lot of hard work, you know. We came up to sixth there, I think, from 16th. Had a really good day going, but it's just so frustrating. I don't know how to put a smile on it right now, but it's just every race. We find ourselves, it seems like every race, we find ourselves on the side here watching the end of the race. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Leader sitting pit road. Marty? Scott Dixon on pit road, our race leader, and I'm telling you, this strategy of pitting now and getting a clean You're racetrack seems to be gone. working for everybody and i hear floor. there may be a full course caution there is a full course caution this will be a huge break for We're scott dixon they yeah. get the primary tires on all four stickers pit lead, pit road under make that caution up, up, and a big up. break for our race leader guys I just say boy the luck has changed <laughs> in his direction <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. holy mackerel that you can't you couldn't buy a better break. You think about the swings in luck on Dixon's side and on Castro Neves' side. Look at look at Serbia. Look at how these guys are out of breath. That, that's how physical this racetrack. He's been probably sitting there for about a minute. We got the, the yellows going, fortunately, so these guys know that somebody's around the corner. That's a terrible place to be parked. I have noticed the Fuzzies machine of Ed Carpenter there. They did good work, his team, the ECR crew, to get that car back together and enable Ed to get back out on the track. So to Tristan Vautier as well. So as the stranded National Guard car needs rescuing, a uh, huge swing for Scott Dixon on a day that could change the look of this 2013 championship. And Oriel Servi is another guy looking for a job next year. He thought maybe he had a chance at Panther. It looks like it's going to be Ryan Briscoe. He could be this. They're trying to have a second car. He could be the second car. He could also be this buddy Jimmy Vassar. He's certainly a, a proven race driver that has never really had a, a real break in this series. I've got some replays. Let's show you, uh, see if this can decipher what happened to Oriel Servia. If it was a spin and then a stall, was there another car involved? This is a replay of a different incident. This is Charlie Kimball and EJ Viso. Just good tight racing, good hard racing. Lots of room. Like I said, it's great to see the exit of these corners. There's plenty of space to be able to do that. Let's see what happens to Serbia here. Let's take a listen. Hit this lap, Oriel. Hit, hit, hit. Yeah. <laughs> it just sounds like it's not shifted. It's not, it's not downshifted. It didn't sound like. So we're under our fourth full course caution. This will certainly help those drivers who pitted early in the pit stop window, in this final pit stop window. As we now work lap 66 of 90 with 24 left to run. And we'll, then we'll only be at the halfway mark of this Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston. This is the third and final double header of the year. As always, we like to hit a break bring you back to show you all the green flag racing. Back to Houston after this. Oh, come on! That's a hole! I 
hate watching with Ramsey. All he does is yell. They can't hear you, Ramsey. But every time he's come over this year, we've won. And he always brings Bud Light. Little dog will come out from under the couch. But we're winning. I love you, Ramsey. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. So you're into fantasy football, then you got to check out these new one-week leagues on FanDuel.com. Check out Chris Prince. He's won 492 grand on FanDuel. There's no season-long commitment, and with brand-new contests every week, you can pick a new team each week and get immediate cash payouts. And look, FanDuel's going to pay out $135 million bucks this year. you got to get your share. And now FanDuel is going to match your first deposit. That's right. Sign up today, and FanDuel will double your deposit. Just go to FanDuel.com right now and enter the promo code GUARD. We did it. Yeah, we're business owners. <laughs> we got we got name tags. And those little bendy straws. And our old-fashioned DSL service. Uncle Bill, internet's really slow in here. And Kevin. Why don't we get Comcast Business? It's up to five times faster than DSL. Uh, honey, maybe you should take a break. But I just got here. She said take a break! Switch to Comcast Business Internet today. Then get voice and TV for just $34.90 more a month. A man pioneers a way to see the unseen, leading to radar, forever providing early warnings and safer journeys. The conviction to create a safer journey is the Mazda way. The Mazda 6 uses radar, lasers, and sensors to detect objects and even apply the brakes for you. Introducing the modern sports sedan, the Mazda 6. What do you drive? The final 23 laps of the Shell and Penzoil Grand Prix of Houston. Great to have you with us on our live coverage here on NBC SN. Lee Diffie along with Wally Dallenbach and Robin Miller is joining us in the booth today because our buddy Townsend Bell is at Virginia International Raceway today racing his Ferrari in the American Le Mans series. Townsend will be here tomorrow though for race two of the doubleheader. That means you're out in the heat, Miller. I know, brother. <laughs> Old people... You like it here, though. Old people... Yeah, I like this. I see why Wally's always in a good mood now. <laughs> Marty Snyder and Kevin Lee and Jan Vikas are with us as always as well on what has been a Really entertaining and pretty interesting weekend because of this mad scramble to get the track built in time after the Texans played last weekend. And now we see pits opened and a mad scramble and flurry for that final stop of the race. Kevin? Sebastian Bourdais has the first in with Conway staying out this time. Great stop for the 17. He comes in running in third. Also, EJ Viso is fifth. Pretty solid stop for him. Bourdais has won the only two IndyCar races on this circuit, looking to make it a fourth straight podium. Young? I, I can tell you just, Wally, why we're seeing what's happening with Charlie Kimball. We talked about he had one more stop, and they were so concerned about the clutch. They're trying everything they can to bump start it. If they can get him going, he's good. There you go. So that's the last time he should have to be on pit road. I can tell you the reason that Felipe did not pit is he was told, follow the leader. Whatever power does, you do. Power stayed out. Felipe came, and they pulled the tires back in. So they just want to make sure they stay in step with power. Well, wait a minute. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, because they're both uh, they both pitted within a lap of each other. That was a while ago. Yep. Lap 37. That was lap power. And, but uh, Pagano and Simona and Wilson uh, made a lot of spots up on that because they pitted at the right time when the yellow came out. But why? They're obviously hoping. They're obviously hoping for another yellow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk more about the Team Penske. Here is Marty. Well, let's chat with Tim Sendrick as they were about to pit, and uh, the caution came out. Wrong time for you guys. What's the strategy now in leaving Will out there? Uh, you know, I think you lead as many laps as you can, but if we were going to come in we're, where we are in the points and all that, it is what it is. Uh, we can go probably five or six more laps here and try and pick up a few spots. But, uh, yeah, it's discouraging for sure because if we can go one more lap, I think it's a pretty good race. But, um, hey, it's just uh, the way it goes. So there you go. The theory being that if they pitted now, they're not going to win the race anyway. So leave them out there. Lead as many laps as you can. And oh, by the way, I believe they're going to put on primary tires next time. That will save them a set of red tires for tomorrow's qualifying session. So an interesting twist for tomorrow for Will Power. Also, think about laps led and bonus points in the championship. If Will Power stays out there, he'll get the most laps led, denying Dixon 
from another bonus point. Hey, another quick reminder about Verizon Streaming. To download the IndyCar 13 app, simply call Star Star Indy or search the App Store or Google Play only from Verizon. Jan? Well, we just heard from Tim Sindrick, and we heard up at the front end of pit road that Will Power, they decided they want to run a few more laps. Looks like you're playing follow the leader. Uh, a little bit, but I think just similar thinking. You know, Luke has done a great job, and it, this yellow is heartbreaking for us because, um, you know, we obviously have pace, but this isn't going to help us. Um, you know, we're just going to run as fast as we can for 10 or 12 laps here and try and build a gap, and when we do have to stop, uh, you know, try and get out as far ahead as we can. Well, I suppose the good news here, Brian Hurd has said 10 or 12 laps. We heard Tim Sindrick say five or six. Maybe that'll work for Luca Filippi. I'm not sure you're going to build a gap on Scott Dixon on new tires. Wally, if you were a rookie and you were running third in, a, in an Indy car race and the guys that stay out, and you, well, would, would, you might, is, would you might want to pit on your own? Yeah, I don't know if I want these guys all over me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, listen, you know, I've run it. You know, he ran a great race, but he's going to have his hands full of it's going to be all over. And remember the last restart we saw Felipe make a really ambitious move down into that turn two complex. Ready to go racing again in Houston. Let's do it. Will Power, great. Luca Felipe and Scott Dixon, the top three with just 20 laps to run. Into that tricky turn two. That's what it looks like. But these top two guys must pit again. And so that puts the spotlight on that target machine in third place. This is the day that Scott Dixon has been waiting for. And, and it's a great point that you made as far as why power's out there. They're just denying Dixon that one point. They figure there's no way we're going to be able to win this race. <clears throat> and, th and that's that's the move. Sweeping around behind the Astrodome. What do they call it? The eighth wonder of the world? And AJ, the House of Pain. Lee, A.J. Foyt won a midget race there in 1969 on the dirt in the, in the Astrodome. Pretty cool. Speaking of feeling pain, that's what Elio Castro Neves is going through. There he is right there. Our championship leader just revisiting the big storyline today. He had a gear cluster issue, was forced to pit as Pagano and Di, uh, Simona Di nice. Silvestro. They forced their way past Saavedra and Simona got Pagano. Yeah. That was I a could. swift move. Remember, we've seen it before at the restarts. It seems to take a few laps for Pagano to get to speed. And now Wilson is hounding him. James Jakes whips through on the inside. Joseph Newgarden as well as they go through that bump section at turn one. Yeah, you're right. Pagano, they've got to figure a way to get this car a little bit better on these starts and these restarts. Some of these guys uh, taking the low line. and But, boy, good racing here. Yeah, Mike Conway is not about to do his teammate any favours either. So the Dale Coyne cars as Wilson puts a wheel up on the inside of Pagano. Good side-by-side -side racing. He's going to lose a couple spots. In the wall. Yeah, that's just enough to lose a couple of spots there. That's what's frustrating right now for the 77 Apache. The car just takes about five or six laps before it comes in. See a little defensive move here on Sato. Let's give some credit to Dale Coyne and the Sunnies and Boy Scouts of America team because everybody, it's always easy to talk about the Penske's, the Ganassi's, the Andretti's of the world, but how about Dale Coyne? He, both of his cars are in the top seven at the moment, the top six, in fact, and doing an outstanding job. You know what, Lee? He's got Bill Pappas and he's got John Dick, two of the best veteran engineers in the paddock, and they always have competitive cars, and they don't have a big budget, and they don't do a lot of testing, and they don't have shock dyno men and all the things the big teams do. they got a lot of heart, they got a lot of talent. New Garden making some noise here, taking a look underneath. Sato going to force his way through. Good move. Remember, these guys raced hard on the streets of Brazil. We thought that Joseph Newgarden may have got his very first career win. James Jakes on the inside of Sato. Oh! oh no. See, Sato had to let him go, and when he let him go, Jakes got underneath him, and it forced Sato in the marbles, and unfortunately, no grip out there. A day that started with so much promise for Houston's own A.J. Foyt and his team with Sato on the pole. It went away with a punctured tire, and right. now it's really gone away. This keeps helping. All this stuff keeps helping Castro Navas, though, fellas. I mean, that's another place he might pick up. Yeah. He's up to exactly. 19. He's up to 19th now. He's going to get Serbia. He's going to get Serbia. So that'll be 18th, and it's all about salvaging as many points as you can. Finally, we see Penske and Brian Herder Autosport pit. Let's go to the power pit. Marty Snyder standing by. Well, and Lee, they stayed out as long as they could to lead as many laps as they could. That was a strategy for Will Power. You see them put the sticker primary tires on there. Clearly won't win the race, but they were trying to do their best to take that point away from Dixon. Will it? Will it now because of this caution? We'll just do a quick count here to see how many laps, who's led the most laps in this race. 
get back to you. There's power that. denied, Dixon. The uh... oh, this is Mike Conway. And oh. our championship leader, Elio Castro Neves. And I think that probably they were coming up on the rack and somebody got on the brakes and the other guy didn't expect it. You see the intricate process there that they have to go through to get it in the reverse. Do anything? Hold the clutch for two seconds. Select reverse. And that's the voice of Roger Penske talking to Elio Castro Neves. Oh, there he just stalled it. And that gesture Another, was just like, a bad day I've, had, I've had enough, worse, I've yeah. had enough. Just come and help him turn me around. Okay, now watch what happens here. You, you see, see that Sato was on the outside. He just gets offline here. He's under the under the curb. But I believe it's Jakes has a, a run coming on him. And then James Jakes comes up the inside yeah, in the Jakes acorn the car. Inside, and Sato sees him, gives him room. But he just gets in the marbles there. And, you know, once you get to right sides in the marbles, boy, you just, it's like losing all grip. Oh, this will be good. Here it is up above. And he was quite courteous to Newgarden here, wasn't he? He just yeah. said, well, I'm not going to fight for that. I'll just go through here. No advantage. However, it was an advantage to James Jakes. Up the inside, out wide. You can see him in the gray there. This will tell us more. There goes Conway. Oh. So Mike Conway and Elio Castro Neves just taking evasive action, uh, but that cost Mike Conway a potential top 10, maybe even a top 5 finish because his teammate Justin Wilson is now in third. Simona Di Silvestro runs second in this race behind Scott Dixon. Wouldn't it be something if the Swiss Miss could stand on the podium? Incredible day in Houston. IndyCar Racing returns to H-Town, Houston, Texas for the first time in six years and it's already been a memorable day and what's better, we've got another day tomorrow it's a double header and speaking of being busy there's lots coming up on NBCSN and NBC tonight at 7 Eastern it's Notre Dame countdown to kick off the game against 22nd ranked Arizona State we play just up the road at AT&T Stadium, 7.30 on NBC. And then at 10 Eastern, two top-tier Western Conference MLS teams meet. And the Colorado Rapids host the Seattle Sounders. And you won't want to miss Formula One. It's either late tonight if you're on the West Coast or early tomorrow morning on the East Coast. 1.30 a.m. Eastern here on NBCSN. It's the Korean Grand Prix. And no money in this, but I wonder if you can guess who's on pole. <laughs> no, is he from Germany? <laughs> Does he drive a Red Bull car? Yes, indeed. Sebastian Vettel on pole, going for his Wheel fourth consecutive one. win. Hey, this could be a little bit alarming. Who knows? It may be, it may not. But keep in mind what happened to Justin Wilson earlier in the race with that uh, damaged tyre after hitting debris on track. Look what happened to Scott Dixon. Look up ahead on the right-hand side. Yeah, watch the right rear and the right front. Actually, goes over whatever that is. And boy, if it's carbon fiber or anything like that, Robin, if those little splinters just tear up tyres. All right, let's check in with Marty. Well, fellas, that's what they're worried about. The sensor on the right rear tire is sending, in, sending intermittent signals to the teams. They, it's showing flat, showing it might be going down, and then it's showing it's up. So they don't know if the right rear is flat. They think the right front is fine, but they are really worried about that right rear tire on Scott Dixon's car and what a change that would be, Kevin. I'm going to let Oriole Serbia stay seated. Uh, you look a little bit whipped. How is it out there? Well, you say it, you know. I mean, it was, it was tough out there. It's just... Um, as we expected, we all knew it was going to be physical, but the car was so great. I really thought we were going to be able to give the, the National Guard guys a good race. Baltimore was awesome here. I had a great pace, and, and I was just waiting for the last stop, but I, I had a rocket ship, so I don't know. Uh, we lost fuel pressure, so we'll have to see. All right, another chance for Oriole coming up tomorrow. Going green. Yeah, let's go racing. It's Scott Dixon with a clear track ahead for this final stanza great, great, great. of round 17 of the IZOT IndyCar Series. Simona Di Silvestro is second, Justin Wilson is third, Pagano and Newgarden. Joseph is up into the top five with just 13 laps to go. Simona Di Silvestro, we had this storyline at the beginning of the year, has never had an IndyCar Series podium. She's running second at the moment. Doing a great job. She, I, she really does well on these type of courses, Lee. I'll tell you, Justin Wilson, he is looking really strong right now like i said earlier he's had a very good car these guys they're fighting back robin i mean well i had a really strong effort this weekend oh, Captain, that was again and again for elliot what 
a day this has been to forget. We understand that's a turn three, local yellow only. Look how Dixon Pagano. has skipped away. Yeah, Pagano taking a look there under Wilson, and this is when his car starts to really come strong. Remember when we got into the happy hour at Baltimore? That was with the last nine laps. It was frantic. We're getting there again, and now we've gone full course again. Sixth time for some 21 laps in this race. And I'm sure it's for this man here, our championship leader, Elio Castro Neves. He just wants to see the back of this race. He just wants to see the checkered flag. It's been painful. Wally, would you just head for the bar if you were casting <laughs> yeah. I'm just packing. Yeah. Just... This is just, you you like I said, you want to put this day oh. behind you and start tomorrow as quick as possible. Yeah. Let's look a little further down the order and give some praise to some other drivers who are having a good day. And the Ray Hall, Lanigan, Letterman team, drivers of James Jakes and Graham Ray Hall, are well placed in sixth and seventh. We're on board the blue machine here with Graham. So that would be... That would be a, a nice boost for both he and James Jakes if they could get a top 10 result. Bourdais is eighth, Vizo's ninth, and Charlie Kimball has worked his way back into the top 10. It's been a pretty gritty drive from him after having that trouble on the original start, which had to be aborted. So we're under another yellow. We'll do as planned. Head off to a break and come back and finish this one off. Every inch, every minute, every second. We chip away at advancing safety with technology, like seeing every curve, even when you don't, being a second set of eyes, or having stopping power when you need it most. It's not intuition, it's intelligence. This is the new 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It is the best of what we're made of. Well-qualified lessees can lease the 2014 Grand Cherokee Laredo 4x4 for $3.59 a month. Inside yours. Streaming four in one mosaic. Inside, inside, inside. We'll push the left. Be smart. Be smart here. Live pit crew chatter. Riding shotgun from green flag to checkered. That's powerful. Download IndyCar 13 now, only from Verizon. For the police, this car is finished. 90,000 hard miles. But I'm hoping for another 300,000. They used Mobile One for performance. I use it to keep my cars running like new. I run Mobile One in my own car. Guess what I drive? Keep your engine running like new. Mobile One. The Ice Hunt IndyCar Series is on the NBC Sports Network. With two races remaining, can Elio Castroneves hold on to his lead? Elio Castroneves wins! The Shell Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston concludes tomorrow at 1 Eastern on the NBC Sports Network. The NHL continues on the NBC Sports Network. Tuesday night, Stamkos and the Lightning take on the Sabres. Then, it's Wednesday night rivalry as the defending champion Blackhawks face off against the Blues. The NHL continues on the NBC Sports Network. Sixth full course yellow. We welcome you back right in time to see the green flag wave here on the Reliant Park circuit on the streets of Houston, Texas. Great Scott day. Dixon does not waste any time, nor does Simona Di Silvestro. And look at how hard right Joseph down. Newgarden is running. He's in fifth at the moment. Would dearly love to push by Simon Pagano. There he is there, ahead of James Jakes and Graham Rahal. I think Morday made the move on Rahal. They flash by. No, he's still there. Graham's okay. got the spot. Sebastian's got a little bit of work to do. And I said, watch Newgarden and how hard he's pushing. This is scenes of Baltimore all over again with that mad rush at the end for positions. And they were changing by the lap. They were changing by the corner. Ten to go in Houston. A welcome return to the Lone Star State for a street circuit race. It was six years ago that Sebastian Bourdais saw victory in the Champ Car World Series. And now it's time for the IZOD IndyCar Series to race here. And look at our leader has disappeared. <laughs> Dixon says, see you later. I'll let you guys scrap it out. Yeah, this is a race for second right now so far with nine laps to go. 2.7 seconds Dixon put on them on that lap. 
Could Joseph Newgarden negotiate? Oh, teammates here, Graham Rahal thought about it. Oh. On James Jakes and then thought twice. Can Newgarden push by Pagano? Remember, Pagano is in this championship chase as well. He's third. I love this section here around the Astrodome as they yeah, build the, the speed on this right hand sweeper. It is as fast and as completely uh, blind. Yeah, I mean, see the section where these guys, you just kind of point the car. And this is a really good, another good spot for passing if you can set the guy up through that left hand. This turned somebody's radio, somebody complaining about a long brake pedal. That was the issue we saw at Baltimore. However, IZOD IndyCar Series race officials allowing them to increase though the ducting to those front brakes to assist with that and the rear brakes as well yeah it's no, it's no fun if you have to pump the brake pedal here on a straight course yeah it's an issue that many teams had so settling into a rhythm now and scott dixon has added another half a second to his lead margin it's now 3.3 seconds Big storyline behind him is Simona Di Silvestro has never had an IndyCar podium. Look at this mad scrap here. Luca Filippi, who was running as high as second earlier, he's trying to force his way into the top ten. He's fighting. And there's power. There's Will Power. He's stuck behind. Oh, and Dario gets turned around. Did Mike Conway make contact there? It looked like it. Been a tough day for Dario Franchitti. Eight to go. Power on Saavedra. This is outside the top Sorry, ten. That's a clear. Clear pass. Yeah, so Vader, a lap down to these guys. Luca Felipe up ahead has had a dynamic day. He's trying to force his way into the top ten and join the likes of Viso and Bordet and fight it out over these final seven laps. Seven to go now. Seven to go. And you got four overtakes. Justin Wilson. Oh, this is Felipe on Kimball. That is for a top 10 spot. It's been a very productive day for the Italian. He's thinking about push to passes, Wally, and Justin Wilson uh, among the front runners. He and Joseph Newgarden boast the most with six left right. that they can utilize over these final six and a half laps. The guy sitting in fourth, though, Pagano, has none left. He's a sitting duck for Joseph Newgarden. There's nothing between those guys, about a second on track. In these closing laps, there's Pagano, there's Newgarden. The Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing, new sponsor for this weekend, and Texas Energy Company Strike, supporting the Indianapolis based team in a beautiful paint job. You want to see it in the flesh, it is spectacular. You know, he feels like he owes his team something too because he pounded the tire wall and then, then he hit the, the, the concrete during practice and said, you know, I really feel bad for these guys. i got to do a good job for them today, and that's exactly what he's responded with. The overwhelming story that we'll all be talking about in five and a half laps is how the day went either way for the top two in the championship. Frelio Castro Neves, a gearbox problem, and that's put him down. He can finish no higher than 18th. And for Scott Dixon, his fortunes finally swung to a positive direction and is out in front by 3.1 seconds. We well, guys were talking about Joseph Newgarden and, and how bad he felt. And Robin, you're exactly right. He told me before he climbed into the car, he said, I owe it to my guys to make up for Friday. They got four laps in and he damaged that beautiful paint job that took 500 man hours to do. He said, I feel so bad for damaging the paint job, but I know we have a good car. And they're coming off of his career best second at Baltimore once again in the top five. This kid starting to roll a little bit. And he's good for another year, Robin, isn't he? He's under yes. a three-year contract right. with Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing. And, it's, and Pagano's going to be at Sam Schmidt's for another year. Uh, there's a lot of talk about, you know, Penske or Ganassi going after Simon, but he has, to, he has one more year with Sam for sure, and I'm sure Sam wants to lock him up as long as he can. For our race leader, Scott Dixon, when you look at IndyCar's best and the all-time wins list, there are only names of Unser, Andretti, and Foyt who have more than this man here. What an accomplishment that is for Scott Dixon. He has 32 career victories. He is the highest as far as the active drivers in the series. Nobody has more, not even Dario Franchitti or Elio Castro Neves. Dixon is the number one active driver. And the next on his list, he's just two wins away from catching Al Unser Jr. for 34. If he can hang in 
for another four and a half laps. This will be win number 33. There's his wife, Emma Davies-Dixon. And there's been a lot of heartache in that family, uh, for Emma's family. And uh, it's been tough times of late, been tough times on the track for Scott, but it's turning round and we're going to get our seventh full course caution. The same as Baltimore. This is Mike Conway. And it was such a positive race for him until it took a U-turn probably about 10, 15 laps ago. Still have caution yet. Is he going to be able to... that thing restarted. It looks like he's got... He's it. creeping. He's got it running. Yeah. He doesn't stall it. Taking off will be uh, as we all wait. Green. As we all yeah, wait and listen. As we wait and listen. Here's the replay. So tell us what happened to Mike. Yeah, he just he just locked it up. He locked the right front up a little bit. And there again, what, if you get offline here just a little yeah. bit and get the marbles, uh, you're done. He was fighting with Marco yeah. Andretti for thirteenth place. Yeah, I think he stalled it, guys. I don't see him moving. It looked like he had it running there for a minute. And. This is two and a half laps to go. IndyCar Race Control will make a decision and say, look, I wonder if we just leave him there and finish this thing off. Simona Di Silvestro is handling the pressure from Justin Wilson beautifully. She's got one more push to pass. In fact, she just used one to try and stay ahead of the Englishman. As they stretch their legs up this back straight to a 90 degree left, Simona Di Silvestro is hanging on. Do you remember the opener, the season opener at St. Petersburg when she was poised for perhaps a podium, but in the closing lap she just died. She dropped position after position and that went away from her. And we go under Orange caution yellow, again. We go under caution again with two and a half laps to run. And that's the reason right there, Mike Conway in the Sonny's Barbecue Dale Coin entry unable to get himself going. Hey Lee, you talk about Simona, you know, I mean, Danica was fast on big tracks like Indy and Vegas, and but Simona, Simona's the first female IndyCar driver that's been able to horse a car around on a road course and a street course, and it, it that to me is the biggest difference. Very impressive. And very impressive. Yeah. These, these street courses are tough racetracks on drivers. I mean, you're, you're, you're have so much concentration you can't make any mistakes if you get offline just a little bit you're in the wall or you're in the tires um, physically they're tough not to mention the temperatures today sure uh, this is great job and look at those unique trophies that our podium getters will receive in the first of two races in this double header weekend you refer to the boots you the know boots. why there's you know why it's a, that's right you know why it's a boot <laughs> fellas because that's what aj used to put up some of his crew guys butts <laughs> Coming to the white flag, Scott Dixon. This was the day he was hoping for. This is the day he was hoping for to really dramatically change his championship look and hopes. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of relief in Scott Dixon's helmet right now. Absolutely. This, this is such a swing. It just took one race, and what a swing in points. And, and now, he doesn't have 49 points to make up now. Eight points from 49 to eight. That's how quickly things can change. The last double header was what got this man into a position to challenge for the championship. And now Dixon is within eight points of Elio Castro Neves on screen. What a tough day it's been for the Brazilian. 49 to eight is what we'll be talking about at the end of today. Scott Dixon, this is what he needed. Race two tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern live here on NBCSN, your home of open wheel racing. Remember Toronto, the two in TO? That's what vaulted Scott Dixon into a championship challenging position. He won both races. He almost got a maximum of 108 points. He almost got all of the bonus points. He didn't get pole for race one. And he walked away with that Sonax bonus, $100,000. There's $50,000 on the line this weekend for the driver who can take a clean sweep. And Catherine is basically has to change the way he's doing things. As far as both these guys for the next two races just have to go out and win. Yep. That's all they, they they need to worry about is not the points thing is out the window. They just gotta they gotta stay out in front of each Wally, other. Wally, you raced at the highest level. I don't care how long you've raced cars. 
Castro Neves, I don't care what anybody tells me about mental toughness and how you're a veteran, you shake it off, this is it. I mean, what are you going to go to bed at night thinking about? You're not going to go to sleep tonight. Of course I guarantee not. you that. Well, listen, not only is there reason to celebrate if you're a Target Chip Ganassi or Scott Dixon fan, it's a day to be worried if you're an Elio Castro Neves fan. But for an open wheel racing fans, it's reason to celebrate for car number 78. Simona Di Silvestro, the 25 year old Swiss female driver. This is her highest career accomplishment. She's never stood on an IndyCar podium. Her teammate won the Indy 500 this year. But today, in addition to Dixon, is Simona's day. They will be celebrating. Good crowd on hand here at Reliant Park Stadium. Dixon wins his fourth of the year and the first of this Texas doubleheader. Good job, boys. That's uh, what we need. It makes it a little more interesting now. <laughs> Indeed it will. A Dixon, Diesel Vestro, Wilson podium. Let's go to the Ganassi camp. And, Mike, we've talked so much about you can only take care of what you can control. You dominated, but at the same time, Castro Neves ran into trouble. Well, I don't know, but, you know, Helio is a tough guy to race with, uh, no matter what kind of day he's had. And, and we didn't dominate the race. We raced well. We had to race hard today with willpower all day long. And that's not an easy task. Uh, just would want to say, somebody asked me the other day what was... Uh, what was the greatest win that we ever had at Chip Ganassi Racing? And uh, I said the next one. <laughs> so uh, this, this today certainly fits that. Thank you. Tremendous day for this team. And remember, you talk about the next win. They've got another one tomorrow. Another one, another chance. And boy, this championship has been electrifying this year. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by Shell. A proud sponsor of the Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston. We'll hear from our winner when we come back. Back in Houston where the look on Scott Dixon's face was relief and uh, a little bit of hydration as well. Scott Dixon, your winner here on the first doubleheader day at Houston. Before you got in the car, you looked at me and said 161. Have you ever been more determined to get max points in a race, Scott? Uh, it's fun to race that way, you know. I've been in uh, Elio's position before, where you got to, you know, try and just keep it simple and, and get, you know, the points that you need. But it's very hard to dial back and not get caught up in mistakes or, or you know, problems with the car. So, uh, you know, it's been it's been a rough few weeks, obviously. Uh, you know, with the team, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's been tough. And, and with my uh, wife's family, Emma's family, uh, you know, big love and a big shout out to, to Jesse, who we lost, uh, and and to everybody in England. Um, I also dedicate this win to Bo. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to be back on uh, back on the podium and back uh, back on top. And you know, today was a big points day, and uh, that's what we're going to keep uh, keep an eye on. But big thanks to Team Target. Target boys were fantastic uh, on strategy. Got a little lucky there with the yellow, I think, but yeah. uh, so happy, man. Words can't explain it. Well, you mentioned personally and professionally, it's been a rough month or so for you. Did you get the sense when that yellow came out as you were coming down pit road? Maybe things are finally going your way. Yeah, but you're always kind of not sure, too, of who's split strategy. So I'm like, you know, as soon as we come out and catch the pace car, I'm like, okay, the three cars in front of me, do they need to pit? And they're like, yes, they need to pit. And then the pit's open and only one of them came in. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. We're going to really have to race for it. Uh, but luckily, uh, there was another caution and they didn't have enough fuel. And, and uh, you know, we were able to, to stretch them at the end. But fantastic car, you know, very similar to Toronto where you could just sort of, you know, maintain pace and then, uh, you know, put the, put the gas down when you needed to. You are now eight points back. How's the game changed in terms of the championship, Scott. I hope they're worried, man. Uh, you know, it's a 41-point turnaround today. Um, you know, and, and hopefully we can uh, have another good race tomorrow. Uh, be nice to, to be in the lead going into Fontana. Uh, we know the Chevys are strong. Honda's uh, definitely strong over the 500 mile, but uh, you know, to have a little bit of buffer would, would uh, be really nice. But uh, you know, I can't thank uh, everybody on the team enough. Um, you know, my wife, Emma, I love them. All the kids at home, uh, Poppy and Tilly, uh, are going to be happy. Hopefully, after tomorrow again. He told me it might take two wins here in Houston to get back in the championship game. It only took one. It's a different picture, Kevin. And Marty, certainly Dixon's charge back into the championship is a big story. But this young lady's drive today in her first ever podium, a runner-up for Simona Di Silvestro, is equally notable. How did you get this done? Well, finally, you know, we've been waiting for this for a long time, and uh, uh, it seemed like we had a pretty good car the whole weekend and uh, uh, qualified up there, and then uh, the race went actually pretty good, you know, and uh, I really have to thank, you know, everybody at KV Racing and uh, also everybody from the Nuclear Clean Energy campaign to sticking with me, and uh, finally we have our podium, so uh, hopefully tomorrow we can even better that. 
you look pretty fresh, actually. How do you feel for doing this again tomorrow? How are the hands? I think it's going to be difficult, to be honest. But, you know, it's the same for everybody. So we, we just have to kind of have a good meal tonight and rehydrate. But it's definitely tough because uh, you don't really have that time, that much time to relax. So, you know, straightaways are really bumpy. So you really have to be on top of the car every time. But, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, finishing P2, I think uh, uh, you want to do it again at any time. So. <laughs> Congratulations. Great run. Second straight top five for Simona Di Silvestro. Runner up today, Lee. And Kevin, for so long, she has been in Tony Canaan's shadow and looking at his accomplishments. And TK was the first there to congratulate. When we come back, we'll balance the story and hear from the points leader. One down and one to go in the Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston. Double header weekend here in Texas. And boy, has there been a massive swing in points. Castro Neves had 49 markers lead coming into today's race. Dixon has shaved that to eight. And all of a sudden, Simon Pagano is only 50 out. This championship is well and truly alive with only two races left. I said we were going to balance the equation. We've heard from all of those celebrating. Now let's hear from the man who had a really tough day. Jan is with Castro Neves. And, of course, the one stat that we all know going into this race is that Elio Castro Neves finished every lap of every race this year until today. It seems like everything went wrong. Yeah, since the beginning, I have to say, uh, from, from, the, from the start to the end, um, uh, at least the good news is I started with the good news. And uh, we at least still leading, which I didn't know that. Um, second, uh, we did a, had a much better car from, from the race to instead of the qualifying. And uh, we're still leading, you know. It, I don't know who makes those GCU, but I tell you what, it's uh, not what we're expecting. The team did a hell of a job. Shelping's our guys did a hell of a job. It's just um, give more excitement for you guys. <laughs> I know when you got out of the car, you definitely had, had the frown, but the smile came back when you realized you were still the points leader. You've got to shake all this off today. How do you do that? Do you Are you trying to rally around the fact that the car felt better? Absolutely, and I was very worried about, to be honest, we changed quite a lot from qualifying to uh, to the race, and I was very happy that we were able to at least to uh, to match, you know, to be competitive, and um, it's a shame. It's a shame, the, like I said, those things are outside of our control, and, um, well, tomorrow, that, that's it. No more conservative. Just keep going and forward. I have a feeling he's not going to get too great of a night's sleep tonight. Yeah, and that's the championship leader, and Scott Dixon is charging. But so is this guy. Simon Pagino picked up 20 points today with his fourth place finish, now within 50. Two races left. Can you get it done and make those two guys ahead of you sweat even more? Well, uh, most important, I'm still in it. So we 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 had a good day. I think uh, we know we need to do improve a little bit overnight. I think we can have a shot at the win uh, tomorrow. The car, when it's going, when tires are up to temperature and the brakes also, the car is flying. So uh, we're not far. Just a, a tick off, but uh, we'll work on that. It's great to be in it because uh, there's uh, two races remaining. And I'm really excited about it. So I'm going to push really hard tomorrow. All right. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. And Simon Pagina will be looking for an opportunity to kick into that championship lead even more. Scott Dixon wins here today. The first of two this weekend. There's Scott talking with Super Tex. A.J. Foyt here in Houston. More to come. Really good day for Dixon, Di Silvestro, and Wilson, but a very productive day for Simon Pagano. He's with Kevin. Well, let's see. Justin Wilson started 12th, had a flat left rear in the middle of the race and came back to finish third. I guess that's a pretty good day when all that happens to you, isn't it? Yeah, it's not a bad day, but we've got to go stop giving everyone else a chance and uh, try and qualify at the front and uh, have no problems, and we'll, we'll have a chance of winning one of these races. So the Boy Scouts America car was great. It worked fantastic, and we're just pushing hard the entire time. And, uh, yeah, it was that, that flat tire. I felt it the lap before, and I said, I think I got a flat ride, and um, they came back and said, the pressures look good. And then half lap later, you know, right as I felt that the back sagged down and totally gave up, they said, no, it's flat, fit this lap. So, uh, you know, it, it may not feel windows are going to be tight, but yeah. um, we just had to go for it and uh, pit early and, and just push for the entire race. I asked Justin how he was feeling. He said, okay, now, but tomorrow morning, I think myself and a lot of guys are going to be sore, Lee. And Marty Simon Page and I got an English accent all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies for that. There's our podium place getters. What a great day for those guys. Let's have a look at the results. And while you enjoy and you see that, pretty much a Honda dominated top 10. What are your final thoughts? And we get to do it all again tomorrow. I think uh, we saw 
Uh, Joseph Newgarden wound up in a, a great position. A uh, lot of action there. Uh, Viso, I mean, it's going to be good tomorrow. Ball is going to be important. I think these guys are going to have to really step up their game tomorrow. What I like about it is they did this for the TV viewers. Every year in the last six years, this, this championship's come down to the last race, and it looks like it's going to happen again, and that's all you can ever la ask for. No chase, no phony deal. You just race hard. Yeah, it's fantastic. Some, uh, some encouraging results, some frustration. Look in 20th position, the defending series champion. Another blow for Ryan hunter -Ray, and he said, I'm not sure how many more I can take. So it was a real tough one, and two for the Indy 500 winner, Tony Kanaan. So tough day, and James Hinchcliffe, he's got another opportunity to bounce back tomorrow. Supertex, AJ Foyt is our Grand Marshal, and he'll be back tomorrow as well. Hopefully a better day for Takuma Sato, his main man. Stay tuned, a reminder, the Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is coming up next. The weekend doubleheader continues, as we've told you before, tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern, with our second race of this Shell and Pennzoil Grand Prix of Houston, live here on NBCSN. For all your IndyCar series information, log on to NBCSports.com. On behalf of the whole team, thanks for watching, and we congratulate Scott Stick, Scott Dixon. We'll see you tomorrow. Sports Network thanks you for watching this presentation of the iZot IndyCar Series.